What's going on, everybody? Cali Death Podcast back once again, <laughs> episode 21. We got uh, the homies, the usual resident homies, uh, Casey, Joel, and Joseph here with me. And uh, today's special, just like all the other ones, but you know, this one seems like it's got some fucking weight to it. We got the legendary cattle decapitation death grind from California. We got Travis and Ollie from uh, up in Canada, Montreal. Fucking, so we got a, a Cali death slash fucking Canada death type podcast going on. Yeah. Another, inter, another international international guest for us, which is fucking awesome. But yeah, dude, um, you guys want to plug anything before we get going? You know, websites, fucking where we can get merch and all that cool shit. Um, yeah, the usual shit, you know, indiemerch.com slash cal capitation, I think. I think that's it. There's a, like, got a couple different ones, I guess, or whatever, but mm -hmm. now we're just, uh, you know, they're like a central hub where everybody could see all those links in one place or whatever. Uh, link yeah, tree, but I don't, yeah, link tree, that's on, it's somewhere, but okay. <laughs> I think it's on our fucking Facebook or it's something. It's somewhere like in our messenger. Yeah. Thread. Yeah, yeah. Gonna be easy to lost find. somewhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, we're just kind of bummed that our last record got kind of screwed over by the pandemic, as far as not being able to go out and play it, because we were super looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, a lot of bands <laughs> definitely fucking were set up like that, dude. With this, had yeah, I mean, dude. ours came out right in the in right before it too. So I mean, we wouldn't have been doing as many shows as you guys would have been, but we, pro you know definitely could have seen some opportunities to get get out and play those uh songs dude, definitely. this is gonna happen over and over again oh that's all good dude <laughs> hey Cat. Anim, anim, we are an animal friendly yeah. podcast which yep. brings us to our first fan question which this is God. travis <laughs> uh how many animals uh do you have and what are their names <laughs> uh I'll, I'll plug our uh our cat and dog or cats and dogs uh instagram it's at siblings in fur siblings and um, fur. we made nice. an instagram for them because they are stupid cute we have a <laughs> uh so this is patty she uh basically walked she's got an interesting story we we um so we moved into this house and then like within a couple of, like a year of being there this cat just started coming around the backyard and we we're like what's up with this cat i already owned a cat from many many years ago she was old and uh one day this cat just walked in and literally walked into our lives just walked into the door and we're like oh, oh. <laughs> and my wife had already been playing with her and trying to they're gonna get in a fight <laughs> uh, she had already been playing with her and trying to bring her or you know get get to know her and stuff so um Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah see dude and that's nomi uh a couple of years ago or a year and a half or so ago um he my wife was driving home and he was a kitten this big in the middle of the street like she thought it was a rag or something just she couldn't tell what it really was and then saw the two eyes you know the the glowing eyes or whatever and uh she pulled over and it was this kitten and this lady had happened to be out there and she goes oh are you gonna take the kitten and my wife was like well what's you know what's the deal and she goes oh the mother abandoned it and the kittens have just been living in this bush like on their driveway and she's like yes i'll take this you know i'll take yeah. the cat we'll find a home for him or whatever so she brought him home and he was so obviously so damn cute uh we kept him. Uh, he's a fucking terror. He's a, <laughs> kind of a bastard. <laughs> Was that, uh, that the constant territorial thing going between them? Yes. So obviously, you know, it's hard. It's kind of hard to introduce a cat to another cat's territory. You know, they're very no territory doubt. animals. Mm -hmm. um, we ended up getting a dog between the time we got these two. Uh, we went and rescued this dog. Um, from a shelter and she uh instantly obviously took over our lives and our hearts but the relationship that she built with both these animals is hilarious they're just they're really fun to watch you know so we made a instagram for them so everybody can that's right la laugh with us you know we it's they're they're fucking funny man 
they already got me going in the first 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> what a perfect time like for that to fucking happen. Um, and then there's our dog Ona. So Ona, to answer the question, long story short, Ona, Patty, and Nomi. Nomi, um, he looks like he's one of those tuxedo cats. So we named him after this 80s, uh, this 80s like opera slash pop singer from Germany named uh, Klaus Nomi that we're big fans of. So we. He kind of looks like him, so we uh, we named nice. him that. They're funny. Was the dog kind of the equalizer of the group? Just kind of like, yes, yeah, actually yeah. yes. And yeah. I wish she had been out here because she totally would have. She she gets all mad and she's a cop. <laughs> but we're at, when we're at the dog park, when we're at the dog park, she totally tries policing everybody else. Like it's fucking funny, man. That's she's, awesome. She's totally That's cool. a cop. It's funny. <laughs> so uh, Ollie. First time meeting you? Yeah, man. Yeah, dude. Sick to have you in on the fucking podcast, dude. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I feel like uh, I'm a, an outsider because uh, we are different country, different time zone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, it's, but uh, we, it's 11 right now. We still oh, speak the yeah. language of metal, though. You're still in a California band. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So the, yeah, that makes sense. Otherwise, we, it will be weird. <laughs> I, I met you in Oakland, so you know, it kind of counts. Well, we call no, it Cali actually, Death, uh, but I we're going to branch out. I met you uh, at the Decrypt show in Montreal. Oh, okay. Was it with Vader? Oh, okay. Did you yeah, guys yeah. talk with Vader? In yeah, we did. I was okay, Vader so, yeah. in Augury, right? Yeah. yeah, I met you there. I was drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably me too. I, I remember talking, no. talking, <laughs> yeah. talking to you guys. I, met, I was like, hey, can you see me now? <laughs> so I met you too. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, uh, yeah, I met both of you. I honestly like, recognize you kind of, man. I was like, I feel like I met this guy. On the, the back alley. I was like, yeah. yeah. What was the venue? Oh, was it? Oh, Foofs. Foofs, yeah. Foofs. Yep. Uh, mm. I think it's going to sure. close down. I'm not sure, man. No, oh, really? No. They, they never reopened since the pandemic. Never. Mm. When did the medley summer, close? And... Yeah, it's done. Medley's done. Yeah. Uh, was that a long time ago? So, uh, medley? Oh, shit. Is that because of the pandemic? 10, 11. Oh, damn. Yeah, I, I saw the last the last dream. show. It was the Spice the Icon. Cool. The Spice <laughs> Icon. And uh, you know who did the, the opening? It was Cryptopsy, man. Oh, Cryptopsy nice. opening for the Spice Icon in Montreal. It wow. was a big clash for us. We're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. Flow, flow, man. He's opening for Despise Icon. It's crazy. <laughs> Times change, you know. Yeah. Or, is at that where Despise point, Icon are from? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I was just about to ask. At one point, Despise may have been an opening, opening for Cryptopsy as well, because they're a Canada band. They too. were the because I, saw, I yeah. uh, Cattle Decapitation played the San Diego stop of the Suffocation Cryptopsy. What was that? Suffocation Crypto and Despise Icon. And and aborted. Yeah killer fucking 2005 we played, we played the san diego uh what no was it like oh seven wasn't it san diego soma they played oh, the main oh, five fucking stage it was for uh once was not it was with really? lord warm jeez yeah. 2005 that's when we toured with uh suffo the first so, yeah, time i think we saw suffo they were yeah they were still supporting uh souls to deny yeah 2005 so yeah that was that pound show that he was tossing worms at us and shit yeah, dude yeah, i missed yeah. the pound man fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> every good, every man. episode it comes up dude we just got to keep talking about it dude never let it die i had a, i had a i had a ambitious idea but i just don't know how to start it but that needs like that place needs a little mini doc or something like that mm -hmm. i mean we all know each other we all talk we're here we're, we're here right now you know it's like getting the interview portion would not be that hard you know but it's it, getting it all together and fucking editing and all that shit like i'm trying to act like it's so easy i've never fucking done shit well <laughs> they're doing one for the showcase theater a documentary okay yeah i heard about that yesterday actually so they could do one for the pound yeah yeah dude it's i yeah i don't know Eddie. the levels what you know like the popularity of uh showcase theater versus how that how that correlates but either way that those places are on the same level as me and i thought like same thing with like bringing these band underground bands and all the, and all these different bands on the podcast trying to like boost it up show people like what the shit that we fucking loved like 
we had such a passion for it. Like we don't think that it should die. <laughs> Sammy, right? The Patty. Patty, Patty. I said Sammy. <laughs> so Patty, what, up, Patty? Uh, what do you no. think about it? Patty, no. you want to meet Rufus? <laughs> she won't. <laughs> what would she do? What would she do if, if Rufus came to the camera right now? I don't know. I, I, you know, you know, cats. They don't see very well things that are like a foot in front of them. Really? I don't know if you knew that. Like it's, I, I just learned that like last year. Wow. So they don't like with her, I'll throw her treats or whatever. And I don't think she has a very good sense of smell either. So fucking, it takes her a while sometimes to find the treats because they're, they're too close. They're uh, the way their eyes work. I don't think they see. I wonder if that well. has to do with their predatorial aspects or they have, you know, seeing small things moving from far away. In the away. distance. Yeah. yeah. Something. Kind of similar is like the Eagle eye. They got to be hovering way above and they can, see from yeah. that but yeah the same type of eye that works that way doesn't work up close i yeah. wonder if they can even see screens or anything i don't know who knows yeah. dude like yeah, yeah. <laughs> same. Uh, i wish at least for like at least one day if there was a day that you know just you know, just for one like day where animals yeah. could talk and we could hear what the fuck they have to say <laughs> dude my dog can you like, imagine all the bullshit it'd be all sorry <laughs> that'd be great jesus can you stop jerking off all the time? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you have a real job? <laughs> my, my, my dog watches TV with me a lot, especially when anything like nature comes on or animals. And okay. Stuff, and he freaks out and runs up to it and stuff. And um, I was listening to Hate Beak the other day, you know? And uh, Hate Beak. Dude, I know you've just told a me shout about out it, to Hate Beak. Dude, shout uh, out. Number of the Beak or whatever. Like yeah. their full length, yeah. and uh, Rufus was just like freaking out, like just running around, like the birds. Really, he could oh, pick out the. the, oh, the he runs up growls. to the speaker and he like tries to get at the speaker. It's <laughs> insane, dude. It's like, I mean, is it all is... Iron Maiden uh, parodies? No, no, no. It, it's, it's like it's like uh, molt molt thrower and like all bird related. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, nice. like songs and stuff. That's actually rad. That's like uh, what Cannabis Corpse, right? They did all the. Weed yeah, to, they did know, nug nug so vile. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so from they started wisdom, branching out, right? Yeah, I love the from wisdom to bake. <laughs> yeah, from wisdom to bake. Yeah, uh, they have a funny. bunch of cool titles actually. Those guys are definitely stoners because I've met them for the first time like four times. <laughs> They're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, totally right. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. I, I mean, it really, it's like, it's fun as fuck to do a pun. So I, I back it sitting around, just getting high and fucking going through the list of all the Cannibal Corp songs and trying to spin it into mm -hmm. Yeah. Why so, not? So Tra Travis, I have a question. Actually, okay. I think Ollie, you were there too. Um, I recently saw a picture. Did Tool go to one of your shows? Yeah. Yeah. Like the whole band? I mean, besides. Everybody but Maynard, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> He doesn't the, do anything. How, the, do you guys like get in contact with them or how did that go down? I think Dave. I think Dave <laughs> got a sorry, this fucking water just squirted right in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, dude. Sorry, all no, it's all good. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but yeah, I think Dave's still about maybe not in touch, but I think he he does have a Danny Carey's contact or something. Um, they, they they got real what, real what? friends that night. They hang they hang out and they were like brothers. Just crazy. Yeah, they're really cool. Uh, what was it? They were on tour with our good buddy uh, Author and Punisher. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we had just done a tour with uh, Author and Punisher of the states, so it was kind of like, oh, I, you know, and he came out and hung out and brought them with him, or they came later, I don't know, something like that. We were playing. And they came and watched and shit. How was that? Yeah, interesting. They're cool. They're nice yeah. dudes. Do they cross their arms and get all close to you? I'm like, look, <laughs> a look of disapproval. I'm just kidding. I think I did see him. <laughs> I don't know. That guitar player is really recognizable. Yeah. But um. But so is Danny. Danny I'm not really paying giant. much attention when I'm up there. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so much yeah, of anybody. Seven feet and Danny is a giant. He's like seven feet yeah. or something. I don't know. Jesus. Jesus. He's like super <laughs> fucking cool, dude. That dude was fun <laughs> as hell to talk to. He's just awesome. funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, crazy, we, we we partied that night. It was fun, but yeah. they were they kicked us out of the the venue, and then we're like, hey, we need to find a, a cool spot. Everything was closed that night in uh, Auckland, New Zealand, and we end up in a gay bar. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We went to a gay bar to get 
some beers because it was the only place open after I can remember, maybe, let's say 2 a.m. or something. Mm -hmm. nice. So we went to the gay bar. It was fun. <laughs> yeah. they, they got alcohol to buy. Fuck it. Yeah. I've had yeah. plenty of fun time. times at gay bars, dude. The alcohol in the jukebox machine. It was fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we home that place. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> Actually, Dave, Dave, Dave was like the DJ. <laughs> he, he takes over the. He takes over those. He takes over. Oh yeah. Those uh, time. what what do you call it? I forgot what they're called, but those machines, you know, the jukebox, like uh, internet oh, the, jukebox. The smart one. We'll be in like we'll we'll be in the most like conservative, like you know, full on, <laughs> like proper. Everybody's you know a bunch of old people, and he'll be blast in, in a wall waffle house or some shit and he'll put waffle on fucking house. he'll put on lost horizon or some fucking or <laughs> or, or, or <laughs> sepulture or some shit and That's fucking so <laughs> and then it's all eyes on us and i'm just like Ugh. <laughs> you if you can't if you can't tell we're <laughs> odd man out as it is <laughs> that's funny uh <laughs> That reminds so, me of this truck stop time where uh, we had a merch guy. This is back in 2004 or five, where he had huge, the big, you know, loop piercings. And uh, that was still kind of taboo back then. It wasn't like a, a mainstay like it is now. And we went to this like truck stop that had like this diner next to it, like in the middle of like Oklahoma or somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And uh, it was packed. It was just popping. That's where the bathroom was. So if you had to go pee, you had to walk through the diner and go pee. And, uh, he looks back at me. He's all, dude, watch the reaction I get. And we just walked in there and the whole place got quiet and just watched us. Like, get the oh, fuck out of here. Dude, I know. hate that shit so much. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. God. Those places are gnarly. Yeah, if you see, they would see California plates and like try to fight you at gas stations and stuff. And just... Dude. Yeah, they hate us. <laughs> out there. Yeah. So, actually, to bring it back to California, I, Go, I want to go back to 96 with you, or even before that, Travis. I want to go back to the beginning, uh, if you don't mind. And uh, you know, brutal us. death metal. <laughs> if it was, I mean, well, if it wasn't for suffocation, brutal death metal wouldn't really exist. But it, San Diego, especially, you know, Diego, uh, Maddie, and all those fucking dudes, Eric Fleecy, everybody, they took it seriously. Yeah. And they're just, you know, this place is responsible, especially San Diego. It's like, it's like, it doesn't, there could be a mini doc just about that, you know, like mm -hmm. there's a uh, brutal death metal. I'm not going to say it was spawned here because it obviously wasn't, but what, as far as it being something that branched out and to, mutated, yeah. you know, the shit that, I mean, Southeast Asia, like what the fuck happened there? <laughs> like <laughs> uh, all these places that, you know, uh, it really, really blossomed and became a whole nother thing of its own. And I think brutal death metal as a genre really, um, uh, San Diego is, has a huge, uh, in California mainly, but uh, has a huge mark in that, in that fucking book. You know what I mean? Totally dude. So take Big us chapter. back to when, like what it was like in, you know, coming out of high school, you fucking fell in love In high school. Yeah, so. Oh, I mean, we were, I, Diego, I was in a band with, it was, I think back then it was called Stigmata and, mm -hmm. you know, Ben Marlin and uh, just uh, some other guys, uh, they went to, it's called San Pasqual Valley High School. San Pasqual Valley High School. Uh, that's like the South, I think, what would you call it? Southwestern or maybe Southeastern, whatever, uh, Escondido, um, portion of Escondido. And uh, I went to Orange Glen so with Diego, Diego lived over here. Actually, I live across the street from where he grew up, uh, basically. And uh, he was, uh, we went to school in Orange Glen together. And I think, I don't know, I must have been wearing a cannibal corpse shirt or carcass or something probably. And he's just like, hey, dude, fucking, you like fucking carcass, fuck, bro. And <laughs> we talked about, you know, he was really into, you know, like, incantation suffocation all, all these bands we we bonded over death metal in fact him and i went to our first ever death metal show together um mm -hmm. entombed um yeah. on a clandestine tour and uh i remember my mom was waiting outside for us this is down at soma in san diego when it was off market i think um yeah the, yeah anyways whatever um and 
they were going into that fucking um that part from phantasm you know the yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and fucking I, I looked at the my watch and i was like dude it's 10 or 11 or whatever it was it's like my mom's I guarantee she's gonna be out there and i was just like fuck we gotta go oh. <laughs> walk outside sure enough my mom's sitting there staring at the front door <laughs> Uh, and then just the whole way home, we were just like, oh, that was so amazing. It was life-changing. Like, oh, yeah. Um, so we started, you know, we bonded over that. And then I was just like, well, fuck, come over and join my band. Um, I think we had changed it to strangulation at that point. I, just so you know, I do have a rather foggy memory. I'm 46 fucking years old. And, you know, it's, oh, dude, believe but it, it, it's, I mention mine all the time on the show. It's all good, dude. Yeah, it's. It, it, it might be slight rough i'm sure he'll come in and go no it was this you know this is when we did it but for all intents and purposes whatever um and i you know i was like you should come over and try out for my band or whatever suffocation or no, sorry strangulation <laughs> <laughs> and then he came you know and checked it out and was just like that's cool and all but we should do more like you know fucking suffocation ish type stuff and we actually brought his brother joe over on the vocals um change it to strangulation and then that was it for a while we did a demo called severed carcass gardens um and i you know we were a band for a couple of years and um i was a t no offense casey uh, i was a typical drummer I, you're not like this i'm not saying you're like this but when i say i was a typical drummer i was a typical 17 or 18 or whatever year old drummer i was hyper I'm a hyperactive person as it is, you know, and pain in the ass. I didn't help them load. I, you know, that kind of thing. It was, we kind Not of ended up, yeah, we ended up being at odds and um, they fired me uh, before I got a chance to quit. So it was brutal too, dude. I was hanging out at my friend's house. This is such a brutal story. Um, no offense to that. <laughs> yeah, I, we're all homies. This is totally water under the bridge, but it was kind of, it was kind of gnarly, man. I, was it I uh I was at my friend's house I'd been there for like two days just I don't know being a hoodlum and uh I hit hit up Ben I'm like hey when are we when are we jamming next and he's like what do you mean I was like I was just wondering I haven't heard from you guys in a while he's just like are you at home and I was like no he's like oh we left your drum set on the front porch <laughs> I was like so you're you're out you're out of the band I was just like are you serious okay well who are you gonna get and we're getting Brandon I'm like all right Fuck you then. Um, you know, whatever. Yeah, that type of shit happens at that age, dude. I remember yeah, I, yeah. I quit I quit a band after right at the end of a set. I said I'm fucking out and I just yeah, got off yeah. <laughs> on stage, dude. My like, yeah. like didn't make didn't even men, yeah. men, mention anything to the guys before I was just like I fucking quit, dude. Yeah. And, and those um, ten you know, people that I, were watching us fucking they were like, oh shit. I I, I pretty much I kind of deserved it, but I was also kind of um I was, you know, I, I never could build up the wrist, man. I, 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 I they wanted fucking, uh, the way I always put it was they wanted Mike Smith and I was trying my hardest to give him Sean Reiner. Those two mm -hmm. don't really make sense. Yeah. You know, they, they want a precise, you know, <laughs> you know, and I was yeah. sitting here doing all this hi-hat fucking ride work, you know, <laughs> and uh, I remember <laughs> Joe grabbed my cymbals and he's like, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? He's like, stop with stop it with the rinky dinky shit. <laughs> rinky dinky shit. And he's talking about this. You know, I was doing all this dumb jazzy shit. Didn't really know what I was doing, but I was trying. And um, you know, it just wasn't driving, but you know, uh ended up they wouldn't like I ended up shit. Their guitar player and drummer ended up coming over to uh, join this like indie rocky kind of band I was doing, just having fun, you know, just no, no stress, you know. I don't think Brandon, who was the drummer, who was the guy who replaced me, good buddy of mine. I don't think he could, uh, he didn't really want to keep up with the, what it takes to be a fucking death metal drummer, you know. It takes a specific type of person. I, I ended up not wanting to be that, you know, it takes a lot of, um, um shit what's the word uh well stamina which i had you know i was, I was a young virile dude but uh also commitment i think is the word 
to achieving a status that I don't think I ever would have been able to. I, I gotten, I think I just got into too many skateboard injuries because the ends of like, like I couldn't get that wrist down, dude. It, 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 I could hear things in there, you know, popping mm. around. So I think I fucked up my wrist or maybe that's just my excuse for being a shitty drummer or, you know, not being able to <laughs> keep up with the boys. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but you know, it, it, it is what it is. Uh, they, I ended up jamming with those dudes and they kind of ended up quitting strangulation. So at the same time, that dude from deprecated, what's his name? The drummer. Tori. 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 I think he tried out or something. I, I remember him coming in there somehow. But what ended up happening was they, Disgorge ended up needing a, a bassist and a guitarist. And so they were like, you're doing the shit that we want to be doing. You know, They were doing the shit that Diego had been wanting to do the whole time with Strangulation from, what, from my point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, so the rest is history. You know, yeah. I, Soon after that, I joined Cattle. And um, I remember sitting at this bar, Woody's, I went there with my buddy. God, I'm going to make myself sound like the biggest loser. Uh, I went there with my buddy. And this guy is a fucking, I love him to death, but he is a weirdo. He, he like, he had this, he did the Irish goodbyes or whatever it's called, where he would, he would just leave. You just duck out. Yeah. Yeah. And the next thing I know I'm sitting there back then. I didn't have a phone to look at. I, I don't know what I was doing. Probably staring at my beer. I don't know. And I look up, I'm like, where the fuck did he go? You know, you just, up and bailed i'm sitting there like so i was gonna finish my beer boom doors open up here comes fucking ben marlin man diego and uh i think it was joe or somebody just like fuck yeah man we just signed a deal with unique leader we're in fucking discord and uh we got an album deal and this and that you know i was like sick They're like what are you doing i'm like uh, bands we, we're putting out a lp here soon it was human jerky the first cattle and they're mm-hmm. like lp that's weird you know <laughs> fucking <laughs> uh you know these guys had it all set up so fucking um you know it was cool everybody ended up being where they wanted to be uh i was jealous you know self-admittedly uh i was just like man fuckers you know they do yeah. what I want to do, you know, whatever. I've talked about it a couple of times. I had that same thing with my buddy, Dan. I, our first death metal band was Carnivorous. And then he ended up moving on to Animosity. And at that time, he, you know, Carnivorous kept on going after him. But I, I just remember being that young, testosterone-filled, fucking yeah. not fully developed fucking man, just like super jealous, like somebody yep. that I was working with you know caught the caught the wind and they ended up fucking sailing away and here i am fucking still working at it but it's just like that's all bullshit dude it's so bullshit you you should be happy now that we're old enough to realize it's like yeah you're happy for anybody who fucking gets those opportunities you know but at the same time you know that competitive nature is what kicks things off uh, i i feel um in what should be a positive direction as long as everybody can jive Mm -hmm. and dude it's like a healthy healthy competition you need that to uh, back then dude it was to do better things well well back then it was cutthroat here in san diego and the reason why is soma had the fucking place on lock everybody wanted to play a soma show they were the ones that got dsi'd and morbid angel and carcass and they had they were the ones that had the nationals and the way they did it was they would have shows in this place called place called side stage um and they would keep track of whose name they said at the door so of course dude disgorge which i think back then they were called so maddie was in this band called uh silent ovation and then i think they became the haunted or, or haunted yeah. uh not obviously not this the one from Sweden or whatever yeah. um, in the mid nineties. And then, uh, and then he ended up joining Disgorge or forming. To, I really don't know. I think Eric Fleecy and him or somebody started that band or whatever, or, or Ricky, sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, and fucking, uh, they would keep tally at the door of wh- whose name they, they said. And then at the end of the night, whoever had the most names, I think, we even got paid a buck or, or whatever. I don't remember wh- what that deal was, but the ones that had the the most 
uh, people said their name, uh, you know, people at the door saying their name, they got to be the ones to open for DSI next time they came through or whatever. So what you ended up seeing was like a lot of the, it'd be, always be the same bands. I don't know how they did it, but Damnation, this band, I loved them. Uh, still do. Um, they, they always, they're on like every fucking show for a while there. And Who would you compare them to real quick? If you would yeah, compare never their heard sound. Them. You, you no, yeah, they 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 didn't break. They 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 weren't a thing. They were just in the San Diego scene. It was like a mm-hmm. kind of like a terminally local band. Um, unfortunately, because they their they're sound, fucking though. they could have been huge in Europe, man. Uh, they had a few demos. Uh, I don't know. It's just I don't know. They they yeah. had their own thing going, but it, it was very that's cool. Very nineties death metal. That's all, uh, mm-hmm. all I could really mm-hmm. say. Um the dude wrote some sick tasty riffs but anyways um so competition was always kind of part of it and i was always i know i was always pretty damn competitive um i feel like that was always the the unspoken thing that was just happening you know just uh just you know nobody wants to come off as like a dick or 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 whatever some people did and and then you know some people were good at hiding it uh but at the end of the day everybody was pretty damn competitive i'm i I don't know if i can just sit here and blame soma for that i i I just felt like that was just a thing uh it was harder to there was no internet so you know everything was done through tapes and stuff so that means your shit has to look good or you had you're held to a certain standard of quality of presenting your shit and you know cdrs and came in and and all that kind of stuff and i remember being like like nobody was really putting out cdr demos necessarily that maybe a few years later but um that human jerky lp you guys sell finance that put out yourself no that was this label and oh okay see cattle got a uh, cattle got a uh a a head start because of I feel, um, cause of the locust connection. Um, and, uh, you know, two dudes in the, that started the band, um, were, uh, in that band, the locust. So that kind of helped us, you know, that's the kind of band at the time they, they all had all sorts of offshoot bands and those ones would get popular due to their, you know, being, um, members of that band or whatever. You guys were like the first death metal band I ever saw really, because, I was in high school going to the Shea Cafe and seeing the Locust play. So where did you live back then, dude? In, in Carlsbad, man. I grew up in, I, I went to San Diego and San I, Dude, this whole time, yeah. that's so weird. I thought you were <laughs> Santa Cruz for life or some shit. No, mm. I just, I lived in the Bay for like 10 years or whatever. Okay. Um, but yeah, dude, you guys like, I mean, cause like, you know, like, gr- like growing up, like, uh, you know, we'd see like punk shows and this and that and different bands. And then it was like the look is like, fuck yeah, that was a big deal, Dude. you know? Awesome ninth, band. Ninth, tenth grade. And I was just like in high school, like go, going to shows with friends who had cars that were older. And I was just like, yeah, it's so cool. Dude. And then like, I remember the first time I saw Cattle and you still had the long hair and you were like hiding from the crowd just like yeah this, this fucking band dude and you were just like <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty uh I was like holy shit dude <laughs> it was fucking rad kind of the timid. first death metal band i've ever seen really man it's weird awesome. it's crazy yeah rad that's true i mean i don't really consider us death metal but back then we were trying to you know it was our, I, temp- our attempt at death metal i guess i had that record too like way back in high school yeah, yeah fuck yeah of course we all did cool my first was uh, to serve man, and then I quickly got the Human Jerky album oh, cool. on CD as soon as I could find it. I think it was like it was two thousand two, three ish yeah. when I was uh, introduced to Cattle, and it was one of those uh, random flipping through the CDs and and seeing that dude cutting himself open, and you're like, oh, yeah. I want that, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Metal Blade really helped. You know, it, it was a tough up upstream swim. that was another thing too is that but, you go for the record labels and and when i saw it was metal blade i was like sold dude yeah I, mean, they, I, 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 re- they, I i listened to that today again actually and i was like oh shit i it kind of took me back to when i at first you know who i was at the first time listening to it and stuff like oh i remember 
just sitting in my old room, just fucking rocking out to this shit. And I could, you know, you just put yourself back in a different place at a different mm -hmm. time, you know? And yeah. that was one of those records. And I didn't expect, you know, I honestly didn't expect it to happen. I was putting it on just to refresh, you know? And I was like, oh yeah, this one actually puts me back in a certain place. So that's pretty that's cool. Rad. I get embarrassed when I go back and listen to that old stuff. <laughs> Well, dude, it's they're all stepping stones. If yeah, you, of course. You know, you know, it's like you wouldn't. But be, even then, I knew better. Like, oh god, I'm not going to out myself on that. But <laughs> we uh, we were talking about the competition first, earlier. The first two records are yeah. very raw, very sloppy. Let's just put it that way. Well, and you got to think kind of it like this. Charming so, back then. Go off of your competition thing, and so there's also a competition with yourself, you know. And yeah, and you're also com com you're competing with previous versions of yourself, and you're mm -hmm. you're con and with us you know solidifying a an album you, you ever go back to it you, it's just like you're gonna constantly nitpick the things that you could fix on it now but it's it's calcified it's done yeah um, man, I, I i like re-listened to it like this whole last week like pretty much every album and i was like oh dude the human i was just like da -da 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 -da. i was just like oh, shit. <laughs> i remember being back and seeing like you guys playing that and i remember dude that's right I, I couldn't even like yeah so i mean that was, was my favorite record well i've always said like whatever yeah. our new our current one is or the new one is and that one yeah um, no, it, it holds seriously. a special place in my heart but fuck yeah i would agree because yeah. it's the first one i think yeah well yeah and i was um was it your first album like first recording no no because i well i mean i've done demos and and shit like that i guess yeah, no, man, full I, end, like full play or whatever yeah well but i also did like electronic stuff and shit before that that made it on the cds and stuff but it was my you, first lp there you go mm -hmm. yeah it was my definitely my first lp so that was that was cool and there's just something about the name and then that cover art Mm -hmm. that just always sick, man. stayed yeah. with me like, like it was oh my god <laughs> I, I like when two <laughs> things are they yeah. kind of fall into place and you didn't even, you know. Dude, hell yeah. It's just cool. And you guys remastered it recently. Was it David Taro? Yeah. Yeah. I was and he's that. doing Homivore now. So I can plug oh, that, sick. I guess. Yeah. I haven't announced that or nothing, but we're doing the second record too. It's nice. Death Pod exclusive. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, we haven't really announced anything yet, but that's going to be coming up too. Nice. Yeah, you know, dude. it's with nothing going on with COVID and shit, it was kind of like, well, what do we do now? Well, I guess we could do this back catalog shit that's been needing reissues. Or we did Monolith and Anthropocene last year or whatever, or a year or two ago or whatever. So, it's, you know, it's it's been needing it. And so that's cool. Like that's a good stepping stone until to get us <laughs> through this fucking big time yep. off. Yep, yep. Well, just- I have this I have a specific memory of you, Travis, of, uh, at, uh, at the pound. And uh, it was like a sold out show. I forget, it was like Cannibal Corpse or something. And some guy was like fucking, like, like flipping you off or something like that. And no, or, I go, noticed go your, your spit skills <laughs> were like, <laughs> I, remember, I, was, I was backstage on the side and I was watching you guys um, play. And some guy was like playing or some guy was fucking with you. And you were like, you're like looking around, and you're so bam, you'd spit at him in the, and hit him in the face. And then you'd look around again and go, bam. Bam, and you just kept nailing this guy in the face. I remember oh, that. Shit. I remember that. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, you know, a I, sniper. I would never. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I would never. No, he was never being an from. asshole. The guy Actually, was like, yeah, hey, you know, fair game. You know, totally. No, Dude, he was definitely thing. deserving it. I'm sure yeah. you've gotten, I'm sure people have gotten a lot worse on their face than fucking travel. <laughs> like well, out of metal show. Travis. I don't know. I, I don't know what to make. Oh, it's COVID. People. That's like a felony. To spend. <laughs> I don't know what to make of what people are thinking. Travis, remember Allegedly. The teddy bear the what? in Germany. The guy with the teddy bear in front of you in Germany. No. No. The guy had a teddy bear and he was like, he was like hitting on you with it and then you fucking wiped your ass with it. <laughs> and he did it again, like, fuck you. And gave it back to him. <laughs> that was so I strange. remember a few years ago playing in Germany and there was this guy sitting, he was like standing up front at Helvet, that crazy fucking metal yeah, bar. It was like the, yeah. uh, the basement in the... Uh, it it kind of is. It? Well, no, no, not in the basement in, in Norway. Not the record no, store. No, 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 Helvet in Oberasen. Ober yeah, Germany. yeah, yeah, yeah. But wasn't and the show with Cryptopsy? We played there. 
I think it was. I think it was. This dude was standing the up there in front smoking and just like, oh. and it's just like right in my face. I, I mean, we, we, we have a no smoking like policy now kind of thing. And it was kind of due to shit like this. Um, mm-hmm. It destroys the pipes. Anyways. Um, totally. The, uh, and later on, like at the end, he like came up to me um, and wanted to tell me how good he thought the show was. And I was just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and I destroyed him. I don't remember what I said, but <laughs> it, uh, I fucking don't remember. I just remember being like, I, I, I got very American with him. I, that's the only way I could put it. I, I, I was just like, oh, you love me, or you loved it so much that you're blowing smoke directly in my fucking face. What were you thinking? And then dude's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, no, no. And He's I, like, that's how my mom showed love to me, dude. I was just showing love, dude. Yeah. So I, I gave him a bunch of shit, but it, in the end, it's, it's all good. Um, but what? What, what is that? Drilling. What are you thinking, dude? I'm just. It's just like. Yeah, that's fucked up. I mean, you're already in a weird situation that dude's up there screaming its fucking head off and, 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 and you know, it's a bunch of, you know, anyway, yeah. Yeah. people stand. It's sometimes like oh, it, it feels so fucking awkward to be when the crowd's just like, and you've just tearing it. Through. Everybody up on stage is going a million miles an hour. Blood's just fucking coursing through their veins. Every capillary of the face is pounding and they're just like, so weird. But- Last time was better. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. So the, the German compliment. Or whatever. It, it, was, it was good, but last time was way better. Yeah, yeah. Fuck up. <laughs> um, since you guys were talking about re-releases, I just wanted to point out. Someone asks. Uh, well, it's not a. It's not a question. He just says re-release the strangulation demo. I wish on dude. CD. Diego and I got to talking about that years ago, and. Um, I, I, I have the tape. I have the reel. Uh, I have the stigmata reel too. Um, oh, cool. I have the old reel to reel tape. So that's the problem We're, right there. You've got a, you've got a huge hurdle. Good luck trying to find a fucking, <coughs> um, a, a person or a company or a friend or something that has a fucking, uh, a reel to reel like machine to pull Nate. those tracks from. Nate you know. from Montagny, dude. Shout out. Fucking tell oh, us really? where you got your shit cleaned up for your dad, dude. He had yeah. a, he found a tape that his dad recorded way back in the day. Oh, re- oh um, shit. Because that shit has up. to be baked. When it's that old, it has to be um... Yeah, he found he found the dude that, that cleaned it up for him and he actually added some some drums and shit to the song and actually beefed it up and made that's it that's sick. A, uh, a fucking <laughs> present for his dad. Yeah, dude, I love that story. Dude, that's the way to do it. I just uh I don't, I did, I actually do know a guy and we had a guy do it on the homivore reel, but we weren't able to grab all the, all the music from it, unfortunately, um, all the tracks, but yeah, it's this dude that rents his studio to fucking Ross Robinson, one of the biggest producers oh, in music. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, but they had one and I don't know, you know, I, I just know that they didn't have to bake it. So the tape is survived, it survived, mm-hmm. but most of them have to actually be in a fucking oven. There's wow. something about the, um, yeah, dude, it's an, it's a thing. Old tapes, they, they, it's got some sort of like oxidization or some sort of buildup or something that happens where if you don't bake it in a fucking oven, uh, there's of course there's the protocol to it there's a, it's not just that simple there's a, mm-hmm. a whole process and i don't Special know temperature I, I, and time. i only know the bait like i said you know you're gonna get some fucking uh, who knows about the information the- it may get like some kind <laughs> of you know it might get all like the uh, uh, you know moisture out of whatever's on it's it, so- or- it, it it's something like that mm. so they fucking you know it's something like that um, and it might be able to, you know, take whatever's on the surface off the surface without damaging the, the reel. Exactly. Or, or or else it will fucking, it'll just come off when it's in the machine. I think it's just all, it'll fall to pieces or something like that. That's yeah. the way it was described to me before. Who knows how much of that's true. My stoner brain is just thinking of uh, cement right now. Yeah. And just like take the water out. You can just scrape that shit off, dude. Mm-hmm. But so old tapes like that need that process uh, probably need that process. This one, strangulation, that was 94, I think. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. So 93 or 94, one of those. Uh, that I'm pretty sure is warped, as they all do. Um, so I know I have one of the demo tapes, but I, and I have, I own the, you know, I have the reel, but um, getting that shit, you know, done right. Cause dude, it would be, I, can me, I would love to have, send it to Otero or, <laughs> or somebody, yeah. have somebody actually make it sound decent. You know, that'd be sick. Or so the clean song, up my kicks. <laughs> yeah. The song that's on YouTube, that's you uploaded. I think it's on, it's via your YouTube channel. There's one of the songs is, do you know how that song got digitized and. Oh yeah. That, I mean, I, so my t- I think I actually, sorry. I think I might've come up, ended up with a second copy or maybe I just used Diego's or I, I don't remember. No, it wasn't that. Um, I, I mean, I have a tape deck that can digitize to you, you know, a USB to the computer. I have that, but um, it would still need post treatment and, and all that shit. I mean, we could get it out to people, but might, you know, might as well do it right. Like have it yeah. really remixed and, and the tracks pulled off and put in the waves and have somebody who knows what they're doing, you know, do it right. Uh, yeah, we'll reach out to Nate and see if I can find the guy that did it for his dad because he said the same thing it was like from the 70s or something it was like something that his dad played for father's day he like found this tape like remastered it did it all sweet and gave it to him for father's day and shit and just spent that i mean it's a lot of money but he definitely like you know it's it's doable i know there's a guy out there in san francisco that can do it so we'll reach out and see if we can find that for you that'd be sick i I, now i gotta remember where the tape is (laughs) (laughs) i thought you were going to look for it right (laughs) no (laughs) oh no 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 uh, I know somewhere in the fridge. Uh, yeah, I've, yeah. <laughs> Next to the oven. It's in the I've, oven. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. got it. I've saw, I, I saw it recently. I, I took pictures of it and put it on like Instagram or some shit at one point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got to see if it needs to be baked. I'm sure it does. And I think it's like most recordings 96 on and, and before or some shit need, usually need to be baked. Fuck but, yeah. And I think it was one inch real. Nice. So are you guys working on, I mean, you have, what is it? Nine albums out right now? Cattle? Um, I, I think, yeah, nine. I think I, yeah, I counted it earlier. I forget. We're, we're working on the, the next one. We, nice. I mean, we're song th- we're on song three now, actually. Nice. Um, usually we'd be on tour, you know, we, yeah. should, we were supposed to be on the road until the end of next year. And then we decide if we want to, use that time to write take a year off or whatever like we always do and write a new record so recently we did the math and talked to metal blade and it was just like if we want to be on schedule and not have a fucking five-year gap between albums we're gonna need to do we need to start right now actually and have it recorded this time next year right the reality now so that's what we're and doing. The fact we are also we are living right now something really like unusual, a bit yeah, strange. It's so it's, never like, it, 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 it's just inspiring in a way. Yeah, it's I more mean, inspiring I, than being in a fucking bandwagon for a year. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna lend itself. It's gonna lend itself yeah. to the concept of the next record for sure. Oh, for like, sure. Yeah, I'm stoked on that. I pretty much have all that shit figured out. I do need to come up with a title. I don't know what the fuck it's gonna call be called yet. I'm trying to work How's on you, that. How do you usually find your titles? Is it somewhere within the lyrics? Dude, Anthropocene took a while. Um, and Death Atlas was figured out before we even um, started writing it. I knew that's what it was going to be called. Um, I have this like thing, on this file on my phone that has 150 or 200 fucking song titles or potential. Yeah, you had yeah the whole concept and the everything already before yeah the the the, the writing was it didn't yeah finished. It be, before i joined the band also yeah because we it talked was, about it on the phone like I it was fit- you i remember you singing uh bring back the plague for me yeah. in, the, the, in our cryptopsy bandwagon like a cappella yeah yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> I was, hey, i'm like holding the phone with them yeah yeah, 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 with the yeah, 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 yeah. That's funny. Like twenty eighteen or nine? No, no, nineteen. Was 
probably yeah, 18. Yeah. And um, I was going to, I was going to segue into uh, real quick, just talking to you about from vocalist to vocalist, like at what point did you realize you could do some of the shit that you can do? Cause you got a, a, a mad variety of fucking well, s- noises that come out of that throat, dude. Well, I've been doing guttural since like I was 16 or something mm-hmm. like that, you know, um, on the strangulation demo, actually Diego too, uh, we, we were both do it to each other he, uh and we had the same kind of technique too just you know pinching off at the top and using you know the back structures or whatever to to um to give it that grit or whatever um so <laughs> you know back then it was chris barnes and fucking joke tech and all these all these dudes from um you know the big heavy hitters broken hope and cannibal and uh suffocation all that shit you know it was like listening to that um and bill steer was my biggest probably one of my biggest influences and the combination of bill steer and jeff walker together Mm -hmm. that was my biggest influence ever um but i didn't you know back then it was i realized real quick off the bat that one you can make yourself sound like anything if you cup the mic you know you can make yourself sound like the most gnarliest most brutal thing of all time but sound engineers hate that so don't do that you know um and also it 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 limits what you can do because now you're you've got this one sound that it it, it, you can't really come off that too much you have to open it up it has to be open so i learned real early that um i wasn't I'm i'm not this big guy you know i'm this small medium or medium frame dude and I didn't, I don't have this big, you know, burly chest. So I don't, my, my, um, the breathy death metal, you know, you know, Mm -hmm. that projection. Yeah. Yeah. Back then those dudes, you know, they were doing that shit. It seemed, um, you know, with their lungs and projecting like that. So I learned with a mic and a recorder and uh, learned how to do the guttural technique at pretty much 15, I guess 16 or something like that. I'm 46, so 30 years I've been doing that. But the the tongue stuff, you know, the, all that fucking shit and the clean, the clean yeah. singing was all from touring. That mm-hmm. was just, that just de- developed over time. But I started doing it in like 99, the the tongue shit. What so that you is- started playing with it on stage? Yes. At first? So doing the- the pterodactyls or whatever we called them back then now they call them zombie vocals or whatever i was that was um that was spawned from emulating the sound of two vocals at once of trying to achieve that that sound of a low and a high at once because i've always been a fan of layering doing you know i was a big fan of deicide and shit like Mm -hmm. that and carcass uh how do you achieve that live with one person I don't know, but I'm going to do, you know, I I was working on it or trying to, you know, find a middle point. Yeah. And then I noticed when I do this thing with my tongue, it would create this pocket of air that gave this like sympathetic tone, which is a tone that's separate from the main one that you're doing. Now, now this, all, all this shit, there's some dude out there who can explain all this shit on YouTube and all that. Oh yeah. Whistling and humming off, at the I'm, same time. I'm literally like, going off of like 1999. Like I'm explaining it the same I would back then. So no, I, I tagged me. you. I, I, I tagged you in that video of that guy that was like, he goes like Travis Ryan. Oh, oh, uh, oh I saw that. that. <laughs> yep. What's I, that? I just, He's a, um, is this some singer from Coach guy? I, I, yeah. Is it I, Ken Tamplin? <laughs> Benitez, isn't it? David Benitez or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I, I, you know, I wish. I didn't, I wasn't a YouTuber, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, so a lot of dudes came along and got big off of doing YouTube or whatever. When, um, I, you know, I, I didn't grow up with that or whatever. Yeah. So I, I kind of wish that there was still a, every, that everything wasn't out there in the open, that there was still a little bit of mystique, you know, totally. but there's not, and it's, 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 fair game it's open source everybody's gonna um gonna figure it out so Mm -hmm. but for the longest time i had a lot of people going what the fuck is he doing and i loved that now i missed that i missed that but but whatever you know it's it's cool it's 
it's cool. Whatever. It's kind of like Eddie Van Halen turning his back to the audience and tapping, and everyone's like, "What the fuck is he doing?" Ah! <laughs> <You know? laughs> but like, like the clean, the cleanish stuff came from trying to achieve tone, like an actual note out yeah. of something that's that's uh, gritty and isn't really supposed to be that way. I've yeah. always been a fan of trying to fit square pegs in round holes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and I think it just started to work on Monolith or something. Yeah, it gives yes. you guys a total melodic edge too, because now you have now you have a chance to be melodic and with those kind of cleaner. Dude, I, 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 I'll be honest, I was getting kind of bored. I mean, we were working cyclically. We were doing this band cyclically. You put out an album, you tour for two and a half years, you do another one, repeat, and mm -hmm. doing the bear and the snake, that ah, you know, over and over again, just got fucking boring. And yeah, until Dave Otero came along. I've tried this two albums in a row, uh, Karma and Harvest Floor. I tried doing the tongue stuff, but when we would record it, I don't know why, but it sounded like paper being ripped it, and it, it just sucked. So I ended up not doing enough of it and doing much of it. So when we started talking to Otero, I was in there explaining to him what my experience had been with this vocal style. And um, he's like, oh, we'll figure it out. Oh, oh, I could do it. You know, but no, he didn't say that, but <laughs> that's just my, that's my imitation of him. I love him to death. Um, but the dude, he could do anything. So mm -hmm. fucking, I, uh, you know, talked to him about it. I explained, we even on Harvest Floor, we even put a monitor in the studio to, to where I could put my foot up and, and try to achieve this live thing I had been doing live for years because people were giving me shit saying, why is your live shit so much different than uh, in the studio? Um, I'm like, because I'm trying to, I'm doing this, I'm realizing that I'm doing this whole different vocal style, which is born out of emulating two sounds, you know, two layered vocals that one person can't do live, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's where that whole thing came from and then rap, dude. the cleans were from uh hanging grabbing onto those notes the slap back from the uh, the back of the venue the reverb the natural reverb and from anywhere from a, a small club in a shitty bar to a massive you know a festival kind of scenario or whatever and everything in between all of that experience was so invaluable so and then people come along on YouTube and YouTube and it's just it's all fair game now and it's interesting it's it's interesting to see how that's that human nature developed. dude once it's yeah. once it's something new everybody wants to fucking spread it thin or shit on it yeah, yeah. has have someone heard those clean vocals yeah have there are they but you said zombie vocals for the tongue shit is there a someone saying that there's a name for the because it's kind of no like, no 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 your, it's your thing like, right? it's just it, what do they call it like gob Goblin voice or some dumb shit. Well, know. you know, because I've seen uh, the, the some leprechaun. of your... The leprechaun. The leprechaun. Or something. Yeah. Or yeah. The, I've seen... the pirate. <laughs> I've seen some videos with you making your trademark, uh, like, you know, s decapitated cattle fucking face where you stick the tongue out the side. I, I can't yeah, even... Like, it's... That's so I was like, maybe that since you make that face all the time, I'd put it, I was putting it like maybe he's trying to sound like a fucking cow that's being slit. That uh, and dude, because uh, I've seen all these pictures of live and shit where I'm all, mm, <laughs> it looks so stupid. <laughs> and I've you know seen people go, oh, I thought it was cool, hard. Have, have you seen him live? He, he sticks his tongue out, he looks like an idiot. I'm like, dude, it's there's a function to the to it. There mm -hmm. always was. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I'm not fucking Miley Cyrus, you know, I'm not, it's not some <laughs> fucking uh, thing to do for fun or to, it's not part of a shtick or anything. It's, no, that's what I, I saw functional. something, I'm saying I saw something <laughs> deeper. I thought like it actually tied good, in with, good. with the whole cattle well, decapitation it, vibe of. It's of very fun. bizarre you mentioned that because dude, when I was a kid, my parents had this cow named Brian. They even gave it a human name. And uh, one night it cornered my mom in the backyard it had her up against the corner i i was terrified this big massive bull and um i don't even know why they had it but that the next day they had that thing butchered in the back fucking yard i remember playing tonka trucks or some shit out front uh i was like seven or something you know and playing with gi joes or something and fucking i hear this <laughs> and uh an hour later the truck drives by, I'm still up there playing. And I look and there's Brian 
Fuck. With his fucking head hanging off the back of this truck and his tongue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, looks exactly like the when I do the vocals. So That's why I put, I put it all. You totally reminded you know. me of that. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying that. 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 Dude, <laughs> I mean, it's like. Maybe there's like, something there. Maybe. That's like a great story from the beginning, man. That's horrible. <laughs> I gave it a human name. Great in a bad Dude, way. I mean, that you could really call that like Jesus. the 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 point where Travis Ryan had all of his his. Now that was working at Arby's, my first the job. Tribute to Brian. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Our, oh man. Dude, What's the next next album name is Brian. Don't fucking eat there, man. <laughs> Jesus. The life and death of Brian. Yeah. The life of Brian. <laughs> too soon. Bro. Oh on. yeah, yeah. Life of Brian Party Part Python. Two, and it's fucking try- Travis Ryan's fucking cow. Travis Ryan. That was fucking. Oh, I, did. I didn't even put it together that your name's Rhyme too, dude. You were like, that I was like a bro, names. dude. That was. I have a... three first names. I was gonna say, you know, you uh, get shit for for your name earlier growing up. Um, yeah. People always made fun. They didn't since my name didn't rhyme with anything. They just made fun of the fact that I have three first names, as if that's a. They're just picking and choosing, trying to find something. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. As if that's even an insult. I don't know. It's weird. I'm Travis just sitting David with my Ryan. my last name's Horny. I'm just sitting back, just going. Like, yeah, yeah. How many times did you get that, dude? <laughs> oh, we were. All yeah, the, all which the, oh, one? Oh, you. Sorry. <laughs> the horny to the horner. No, we were talking on the pre pre pod, but uh, yeah. yeah, it was probably. F- through third grade, I would say that I was getting Joel horny, and I was like, through third grade, third yeah. through third grade. I mean, yeah. it was probably preschool to third grade because then the, kind of exposure was going on in that part of. Well, I mean, I think it was from, children. It was the horny toad thing. Though. It was it was coming from uh, the horny toad. That's true. And so it wasn't it wasn't like you know. Oh, horny. so they they were calling yeah. you like you had fucking skin deformations. You yeah, had fucking horns <laughs> all over your body. You squirt blood out of your eyes like this. I got you. <laughs> You do? No. <laughs> I love sick. those things. That's one yeah, of my dude. favorite animals. Is reptiles in general for me, dude. Always, I, yeah. I always trip on reptiles for sure. Horn actually, I have a, cool. I have a tarantula at home. That's the only pet we have right now. Pink toad that actually just uh, molted for the first time. So it was pretty awesome experience for the kids to see the fucking, you know, the exoskeleton left behind and then the yeah. new, you know. And you even see it like the colors are changing. It's actually, it seems like it's getting bigger just from that one mole. It's like, whoa, dude, this is yeah. pretty trip. I used to uh, go out to, I had family that lived in Texas when I was a kid. And we, uh, I went out there and out in the fields or whatever there, I would always go out and find horned toads. And you take, uh, if you take, uh, you take them and, and turn them over on their back, they fall asleep. It's not that they, they like don't right fall asleep. They're just going to like a high, kind of like a hybrid. They go into something. That they don't fall asleep, but that's a trance. It's a trance of some sort. They, yeah. it, it stuns them or whatever. You know, it doesn't hurt them or anything that I'm, you know, you're not supposed to do this. This is 1981 or some shit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, and I was a child. Think, I, I wouldn't do this now. I, I, I think they're also protected, I believe, but not something I would do now. But yeah, you turn them over and rub their belly and they just. They'll stay that way until it'll be a fight or flight thing where they're just like trying to play dead. I was just about to probably, it probably is like for for, for, to be food in nature. They, yeah, just submit. But those kind of instincts that's what I I just thought they were cool, you know, it's a cool thing. That and the squirting blood out of their eyes is cool. That is trip, dude. And they're cute as hell. What is that for? It's like protection, yeah. Yeah, maybe like whatever you may may get in the eyes of whatever's going yeah. for it and give it some time to get away or something. Yeah, it's cool. Just freak the fuck out of another animal. Like, what the fuck? The That's true like because they have, they have they uh, have they have closed <laughs> valves in their eyes, just ready to just be like. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I can I ask you to elaborate a little, Travis, on the the Arby's first job story? Oh, dude, I'm gonna. <laughs> There was this, okay, you know, the fucking, oh, I was like 14 or 15 or what, what, whenever you're the, the first age you're allowed, I've always worked. Um, whatever the first age you were allowed to start working um, was. So one of those years, um, dude, I just, besides the just usual, like, you know, oops, I dropped the patty or, or whatever. And then just, you know, putting it back and giving it to the people. <laughs> the grossest part was, um, there's this roast beef you pull out, of course you pull out of plastic and it had this like one inch. Um, I don't know if they still do this, but this is 
you know, 1990, early 90s, late 80s, something like that. Mm -hmm. They had this protein gel that you had to pack into the fucking uh, meat. Like, say you got this, whatever their, their, uh, what is that fucking, what's the name of their, the roast beef or whatever. So, mm -hmm has this fucking layer of gel that you had to pack into it and it takes like 15 fucking minutes so it's just you're sitting there just packing this clear protein gel into this fucking it was just nasty dude and i yeah. i'm like this fuck this shit man that's I've, disgusting my my last sip of beer came right back up my throat dude uh, like oh, halfway dude. through that that's dude the prep Gross. for that you're just like what the fuck it's so, fucking nasty. Yeah, I we, never even I never touched that place in my life, dude. Mm -mm. So what Can't you're saying is that you home. you hired Ollie because his last name means spinach and <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And Ollie. Oh, that's so, funny. so we yeah, hired Ollie, Ollie cuz he's the fucking he's the man. I was born to be in cattle. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, dude. Uh, we he filled in years ago for us. 2013. Yeah, on two shows. Was that Slum Summer Slaughter? Summer Slaughter with Dillinger yeah. Escape Plan. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, and dude, that's crazy. That story is crazy. Man. What was crazy was it, this yeah. motherfucker had never even played a lick with this on stage or in a studio or nothing. And what I think you guys were like for two hours before the show, before we went on, Not you even, guys, nothing, no, nothing. You didn't even like, do anything. Basic, they didn't even sit basic, back and backstage. No, no, we just assumed he had it. Went up there <laughs> oh and packed, God. packed the, venue. The only, the only thing I asked, uh, it, it was, we were on stage already. It was show time. After change or it's our time. I looked at Dave and I was like, dude, what's the cue? <laughs> like, do it. Okay. Dude. <laughs> I didn't know. KC, I mean, you know, that, that can fuck everything up. You know, if, oh, if that yeah. was, we've, uh, we've always, this goes back to the very early oh, yeah. days of cattle. We always did two hits. Ta, ta. <laughs> and, go, and then go into it but i Most, didn't know if we lost like, yeah yeah stopped. and fucking thank god yeah. is there a pause or something I'm, yeah, yeah i'm glad you, it's good that you asked that because fucking two hits everybody goes into it and you're like oh oh shit because you know <laughs> yeah. four hits is the usual <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've that's always been a standard. four hits thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. the standard for most bands i would assume but yeah, yeah. i i got them I, I feel like i got them i might be wrong but um i remember yeah. Uh, back in the early days, you know, 2000, early 2000 or something like that, uh, just being like, let's do two hits, you know, gah, gah, you know going yeah, but... into it that way or whatever. Um, trying, to min scared. trying to minimize it. It'd be cool to just do one. <laughs> I think we can <laughs> <Yeah>. do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what we did. On, hot dime. <laughs> on our first, uh, that first odious demo that we did at Gestation where it was, it's like one stick, like, <laughs> just did like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, yeah. sick. But was, he was he was the man, and we knew. There's like was mid, crazy, there's at that mid song time, two counts though, right? We got some mid song two counts, yeah. Casey, right? Oh, sorry, what mid, mid song two two counts like the pauses? The oh, like two between, back yeah. into it. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pierce yeah, dude. Classic. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, uh, that I made it, that made that part way season. more brutal. Just that I know, fucking, right? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the two breaks, the the breaks before the the big slam. It's See, so man, two, man. It's just two stick clicks. That's all. That's all it takes. I wish they could have just had breakdowns be, you know, relegated to just them. That would have been sick. Yeah. It, you know, it was. It made it special. Like mm -hmm. I know that's a hardcore yeah. thing, but Suffo yeah. doing it, they I just know, man. it was perfect. It's perfect. It was intelligent like breakdowns. You know? <laughs> yep, and mm -hmm. they're their usage of the 808. I think they were like the dude. To I me, they exactly were the first one. They, you, yeah. Weren't they the first oh, ones? Yeah. Da, boom, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, later yeah. cephalic and other bands. Yeah. 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 I mean, I can't think of a band before Pierce from within that used an 808, like no. um, Death Metal. I can't either. And it wasn't a thing with Deathcore or Metalcore yeah. bands or whatever until later. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that was an 808. I thought that was an 18 inch floor tom or something. Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah, like it was be. like a modified 808 kick or something. Well, they call they just call it 808 is like a term, but it's, it's okay. Like a, okay, you can tune it. That's whatever. true. That's true. Yeah, it's just like a bomb tom is another. 
What does 808 oh, reference? Tom. The like TR808, the Roland. Um, yeah, I can show you drum, if you want. Drum machine. No, I know, I, I know what, what it sounds like, but I'm saying like the 808. Yeah. That so it just references the. It's the, the, the no, it's the yeah yeah it's the the model number of the, Got the it. Roland. Yeah yeah, and then there's the 909 or whatever. I didn't know yeah, if it was like some fucking frequency that. I no, these are all those are and, those are old ass drum machines that yeah. go back to the early days of hip hop. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why it's so like. This one's got it's an 808 on it too. Yeah. 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 yeah Justin's got it. Yeah. It's interesting basic. that it maintained that, uh, that fucking name instead of, you know, oh, it's a yeah. zombie and blast. It, and it genre <laughs> jumped yeah. too. Yeah. 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 The genre jump of it as well. Uh, that shows the crossover. Yeah. Enough hip hop, enough yeah. metal dudes hear that how, how hard it hits in hip hop. And they're like, let's add this to a fucking, the beginning of a breakdown punch yeah. everybody in the face but then it just gets overused by so many different people and what's funny is the the albums where they try and put it on and but it's like a higher frequency 808 that just like dies out like super quick and you're like it actually didn't make it punchy dude it actually makes the beginning of that breakdown sound weird now i think my friends like they or one of our friends like their speaker like caught on fire or like smoked because of cephalic carnage all the 808 like and just like <laughs> blew the speaker and it like was smoking or something subs subs dude <laughs> it's like the speaker wasn't down it wasn't ready for that i'm surprised Alpine it wasn't like a deathcore band that was coming out like dude we do 909s bro because we got the oasis <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's even deeper <laughs> yeah right exactly yeah. <laughs> oh yeah it's 101 <laughs> deeper <laughs> but i was gonna say man like dude like like we, we we were talking to dave and we 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 all know dave like pretty well like we used to you know those guys yeah oh dude yeah he's such a cool dude and uh we were just talking about like dude how sick like the like the new album is and like just all the stuff on it and i i, I don't want to jump ahead a bunch but i love it I mean, oh, yeah i really love it too sick. and you guys couldn't tour it it's like god damn or uh, did you guys do any shows for that new one? i mean it came out when we oh. were a week or two into the oh okay last year or uh not last year the year before um <laughs> 2020 uh, like u.s tour year. i know yeah um <laughs> before the, the, the our last u.s tour that we did and we did yeah we did some songs from it in europe on a tour right before that one okay but then all we did after that was the fucking australia new zealand japan tour that fucking that was it yes. after that then you can't it come i haven't seen that. last time i saw him was shit what, was, Tokyo uh, airport or something? Was in Tokyo. Jeez. No, at Damn. the hotel in the lobby. We said bye. That's right. And we were supposed to to meet like a week or two weeks later for another tour. Oh, uh, that's right. We're like gonna that. be doing so Europe. Like, okay, cool. See you in two right. weeks. Nope. I got canceled. <laughs> hmm. That dude, man. That dude, we had the rest of the year. Was... We had the whole fucking year. This all Jeez. the way up until like right now booked. Or, yeah, we had the full schedule. Setup. Full. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Joseph, Joseph was going international too. You had some international shit set up, right, Joseph? We were gonna, yeah, we we're gonna do slamming Asia with uh, to violently vomit. Really? Yeah. Because he had Diego slamming had Asia. Just... Is it the uh, who's that guy? Is it the uh, what's his name? Samprasong. Samprasong. Yeah, he was Sampra gonna. Book this guy our tour. is so cool, man. He's pretty He's cool, so on, cool on the internet. I hope to meet him. Yeah, he had he just did booked the, the uh... cryptopsy and dude, we had good times, man. He's very pro. He's he's actually very really, very really cool. You'll see. He's funny. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sure Cattle has played Indonesia, right? Is no, it? we haven't done any. Oh. Only uh, Asian countries we've done is Japan. Oh, okay. We haven't done anything else? We've been there with shitloads of offers, but yeah, it's tough to. Yeah, how is it with Cryptopsy out there? It's surreal, man. Because first stuff, we land in the Bali. And the promoter told us, oh, it's a four-hour drive from the airport to the venue, to the festival. Dude, it wasn't four hours. It was 11 hours. Jesus. In the jungle, dude. Like, oh, out of nowhere. Fuck. The most sketchy road. And, uh, Did anybody have arrived, weed? <laughs> no, because nobody smoked in Cryptopsy other than me, so... And we're in the Indonesia. I don't know, dude. I don't know, man. Over there? Well, we'll kill you there. <laughs> Josh is like, dude. I, I just I think I think I'm already out in the jungle. I don't know. We dude. Fuck. <laughs> well, dude, I don't know, man. And, anyway, we arrive at the festival, and it was our changeover. Like what? It's time to oh play. Oh my 
God. we just spent 11 hours oh sit in the tiny van and mm. guess the, the promoter come uh, dude, he picked us up at the airport and he come with four of his friends in the van <laughs> like what's the fucking point <laughs> they want to meet you they can meet us at the festival <laughs> that. and it was the most sketchy stage ever uh, the most I think they just put like a cryptopsis sticker on the the kick on the bass drum. It was our like <laughs> custom. Six, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> so it was the kit. Of, everybody was using the same kit. All that shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah. but it was massive though. It was really oh, okay. huge. It was, and Diego Dude. actually he told he told me when you're gonna play in Indonesia, you'll see you guys gonna be a rock star. Mm-hmm. I, I'm very curious. Thousand that, people. I, I, I wish somebody would like put the money into making a documentary or something about it. Cause I'm very curious as to why it's such death, brutal death metal, especially brutal death metal Yeah, uh, of all the, the, the parts of it to be so huge over there. This actually like, is starting to become a subject that is a frequent thing that comes up is yeah. we're trying yeah. to make Joseph's, you know, doing more work than we are, but it seems like that that's a subject that Joseph's definitely diving into. The, this the, project. The Cali Death, the, the Cali Death project, there's like a book component to it. This is like kind of original. So you gave me a ton of great source material oh, cool. already. Uh, but that's one of the questions. And I feel like I need to connect with some like musicologists and anthropologists on, yeah. on that. Yeah. Definitely. I think Diego, he probably has a better memory maybe than me. So make sure he vets all my information that I fucking gave. Cause... Well, Diego does. <laughs> Maybe he not. Smokes the most weird. Yeah, so, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Ben was still around. He remembers everything. Yeah. yeah, I wonder what like how deep they were into the actual like international tape trading era. You know, like how how long it took Indonesia to get. Oh yeah, yeah. Those it tapes, be, you know. Well, I would assume it's the internet helped. Yeah. Help help make that happen. Probably. But what sure. is but what is it about this territory? What is it? What, what is it about this style of music that makes it so drawn, like to this territory? Or are we just? It, it may, maybe it's not a thing to them, or may, maybe it's it's really not a thing. But since it's so welcomed there to a very niche part of music, mm-hmm. maybe that's so why it just seems like you know somewhat of an anomaly. Somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is, you know, like there's there, there's something cool there. Artists. There's something there because you can't go anywhere else in the world and have that kind of reaction to this kind of music. And um, to take it unless back it's a festival. Said, the collective, I mean, I know that I felt like we were in a collective of bands in our prime time of doing Odious and all that shit. Mm-hmm. That, that healthy competition that we keep falling back on was, you know, we've talked about it before, what kind of, you wanted to at least be in the race and you want to be fucking you know, playfully ahead of your, your buddies, if you can be, you know, and, and I don't know what that did in terms of any mutation that you guys talk about, or that we're just talking about, because we, I mean, we were part of it. I don't even think like, if you're the experiment, how are you going to see yourself? You know, we're not the ones looking at the, it's hard to Petri dish. Yeah, we are. We were in the Petri dish and now, we there are people are somebody else has got to figure out what happened there how it fucking spread like bacteria yeah. in certain directions that's really interesting I don't, that was pretty good with fucking metaphors and analogies all up in <laughs> there for a while there. <laughs> nice um can we can we touch on on the since we're talking about international scenes the the scene up in canada that you're coming from ollie mm-hmm. yeah, because sure. i just wanted to point out that there's a book also called no no speed limit on quebec yep. metal it's actually uh you, you know him trav yan campbell the former singer of naraxis he wrote mm-hmm. that book oh mm-hmm. cool yeah. that dude's awesome man yeah he's so sick so it's almost uh, you just mentioned like uh, you want to do a book or something about california history or the death metal yeah thing. So, it, so basically it's the same thing but for quebec yeah. So the first tome is about the the Hades, like thrash metal band like Void Blood, uh, DDT, a, b- a bunch of bands, and I'm I'm really looking forward to the next one, the the, the 90s. So Cryptopsy with 
the blasphemy may flesh non survival gorgas it's oh, gonna yeah. be great man because we're talking we talked about competition earlier in quebec i think it was pretty like you got so much yeah. there, though. Intense, yeah. cause... and definitely made sure that they, you know, they added originality. Because yeah, those two bands right there, Cryptopsy and Gorguts, are two totally original bands for me when I first was, you know, exposed to them, and still are mm-hmm. today. You know, yeah, but isn't totally as far as Canada is concerned, isn't and maybe even North America though, uh, except for with the exception of Mexico City, um, isn't Edmonton probably like the fucking most concentration of metal fans in North America? Edmonton? Yeah, dude. That's what it seems like. Oh, I've shit. had this conversation with I a ton of people. I've never heard that. You're like per population. Didn't we talk about that? The fucking uh, Starlight uh, or Stardust or whatever the fuck that venue is? It's insane. Uh, it, it's Star- just... Yes. Star- every time it's like sold out, there's a line at the merch booth that doesn't stop until the show's done like from doors you know i just don't know, see I, that anywhere else necessarily i think i played in in mountain twice in my life really because you haven't played there with us never stopped in Edmonton. oh shit for man. a reason so maybe that's why because they don't it's, have a lot of shows I, to be honest, okay maybe, maybe 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 because dude it, it we've been just like is this like the fucking center of metal for fucking all of no, north no, america I, or I what because it's that. insane mm-hmm. like the shit loads of people come to those Edmonton shows. Um, so, you know, same for Cal- Calgary, all this yep. area. I, I feel uh, Saskatoon. I feel that yeah. maybe because a lot of bands skip wait, those. It cities. Isn't Edmonton that's in Calgary, right? Um, or is it Saskatoon? north of Calgary? North of Calgary. It's north of Calgary. It's way up there. What territory though? Alberta. Like Okay, Alberta. I I I got the Google map. <laughs> I had to yeah. check it out. Alberta. It's, it's insane. <laughs> I'm a compulsive I, it, mapper. Yeah. That place is. It's like this underrated gem. Every time we're mm-hmm. coming through, there we're like, oh, Edmonton. It's gonna be sick, and it's insane. We we've done these, not full Canada because we don't go out into the outer banks the or whatever. Maritime. But yeah, we don't do any of that, and we haven't gone you way should, north. It's but sick. Yeah, we did Thunder Bay. <laughs> no, dude, but that's not. See, it's, it's not. No, no, I'm Ontario. not talking about Thunder Bay. I'm talking about the. the yeah, I know. We've never done any of that. We've never done any of that. The, the maritime but, are, are great. The middle is. Uh, yeah. Not so great, but. Quebec City is cool. the one that's really crazy, right? That pops off, doesn't it? Uh, which, yeah, which Quebec is, and Montreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say Montreal, is... uh, of course, is like the big city. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot. For me, Montreal was such a fucking culture shock, and everyone was fucking packed in and couldn't get in the fucking venue. And it was like whole. Cr- I remember the first time we ever played there. I mean, the second or third time we played there, actually. But it was Summer Slaughter, and it was a breakdown and and end time begins, and everyone did the you know the Europe chant thing, mm-hmm. and it was so loud <laughs> that I couldn't fucking hear what I was doing anymore. It was like. Yeah, because you guys, there. for a yeah. reason, the Crypt in Montreal was, like, bigger than life. People were talking about it, like, dude, diminishing between worlds, holy shit, you need to check it out. <laughs> it was, like, the next Necrophagist for us. Yeah, I always like that- to... <laughs> but keep in, keep in yeah. mind that one, one of the bigger bands in our scene at that moment was Covatis. Mm-hmm. Oh, and fuck yeah. And Decrypted Bird <laughs> came with the diminishing... And it was like Necrophages meet Covatis. Covatis. And Covatis, Covatis, they set out venue with like, uh, yeah. they sell out the medley by themselves. Medley. Like, they have that video of a, them like at the medley, right? 1,500 people. What's yeah. this Death medley metal, place? A local band? Are you You've got to play the medley. It was like, it was like uh, yeah, probably hold, held about fifteen to 2,000 people. And it was like, fucking. Have we played there, God. Ollie? No. I so. uh, you no. probably did back in the day. After it was like the spot. I never, I never heard of any cattle. We didn't, yeah, we didn't get to go to Canada until um, 2000. You play with Psyopis, okay? Yeah, Mm -hmm. I saw you guys, I think, for the first time in Montreal. Wasn't that maybe Cafe something or Cafe Lenko? I think we played two uh, shows in one day or some weird for Summer Slaughter. Yep, you played two shows. What's that at the book in the all age show at the Cafe Lenko? That show was fucking crazy. Like it, it was like the tiniest room yeah. ever. Yeah, it, it was tiny. It reminds me like of a closet. It was just 
you open yeah. this <laughs> awkward door and like what there's a show and you can fit what 90 people in there yeah and i cephalic played back they they they, they were staring like the, the the wall instead of the crowd it was so weird like dressing in a hockey jersey and stuff like they didn't give a shit like fuck that <laughs> i do feel that, that fucking competition out there though like i do feel like with those bands out there and the, the scene out there like it's, talking to the fans and stuff like it's uh, it's there yeah there's yeah. a lot of cut but i don't know now but back in the day it was huge and that's crazy because uh, dude uh, my first show was the my first death metal show was cryptops and suffocation 2005 oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so yeah yeah holy I'm shit <laughs> yeah. i always and forget about that, how young you <laughs> and back in the day i didn't know anything about like drama or band story or whatever so for me I was, it was magic like, wow it's a great show wow, wow, wow. <laughs> but then i joined cryptopsia and i heard every fucking story that happened that night and that night was super controversial because it was a cryptopsy show but suffocation headline so oh yeah it was like mm-hmm. what's going on what <laughs> happened <laughs> what happened you know but back then i was young and i was like ah fuck it shit happened like suffocation were late so they played last yeah <laughs> anyway well dude but so i was then go ahead sorry hmm? no no go ahead I, I was just gonna jump in and say that like i used to see like cattle play with dia side at like the galaxy theater in santa Ana before i was still in high school man like or maybe I was like eighteen or nineteen. Like that was when I was like just jamming with Dan and getting the stuff going. And like it was like you know it's, it, it, the different generations and ages. Like I'm thirty eight. I just turned thirty eight a couple of days ago. We're all different ages. We're all and it's so fucking cool, man. Like Joseph's, you know how how old are you, Joseph? I'm thirty, turning yeah thirty. Yeah, you know, so we're all these. So we are. It's, it's we have the same cool. age. I'm thirty. Yeah, yeah. You it's know. a good oh, age. I jo- I joined crypt. Uh, no, I joined Naraxis. I was eighteen. Nice. I think that's where so, I saw. Did you play San Francisco, at, uh, bottom of the hill, or the yeah? Parkside we played San Francisco with Belfagor. Yeah. Parkside. And, that place. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. What, hell yeah. And I can't remember. Does the DSI Sorry. play that show? I can't. I can't remember. I don't think not the one I saw. Um, it was a DSI tour, but we had we didn't have any days off. We played every day. Yeah, yeah. So I can't remember. It. Was it the Belfagor show or yes, I don't know. But I, I, told, I remember seeing you in the crowd. I was like, oh, shit. That's a guy from the <laughs> Keep in mind that you Just like the, you the, the hammered guy who's like high-fiving everyone. Like, shit. They're right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, going back to like what you're talking about with the uh, cryptopsy not going over Suffo, we um, played a show in Texas where it was uh, we met up with that carcass suicide silence, like some sort of big package thing, and it was like a Suffo package that we were on, and um, they they laid it out where it was like suicide silence was headlining over suffocation, and um, mm. so all like the metalheads in the group were just kind of like I could tell Dia said it was kind of like perturbed about the situation a little bit, <laughs> and. Uh, I remember Frank just going out there in, in Suffo and just going out there and being like, you know what? We're going to fucking crush these motherfuckers. I mean, they took me aside and we're going to fucking crush these guys. Fuck this. Like they were like, they, were, they weren't pissed, but they were like, okay, this is the new strain of stuff that's going on. We're going to go give it like the best fucking show we can do. And they just went out there and just destroy like the best show I've ever seen Suffo play. I've seen them Dude. play, you know, a hundred times or something. And I was just like, well, like they just blew it out of the water. They like, are so fucking precise and their sound is always perfect Dude, yeah. their tone they they are yeah you don't want to go up against them you want to play for them it's so, stupid i, to I have them. to That'd say dumb. that night when cryptopsy anyway when Suffo played uh, on top of cryptopsy everyone was like confused like what's going on and then <laughs> after cryptopsy when they shut the curtain so Suffo had like your private changeover it was like what is going on <laughs> They came in and do best sound I ever heard. Of yeah, yeah. Wow. it's fucked up. It's like you could you could go into a Suffo show and be like, I'm gonna I'm gonna purposefully try and not have fun tonight, and then like within ten yeah. seconds, dude, you're like, nope, I've already nope. I've lost. No, how sick. Speaking of Cali Metal and all this, like, how sick is it that Derek ended up in that band? So oh, sick, dude. Mm-hmm. Totally. That's like the total 
that movie Rockstar, you know, the, the <laughs> Judas Priest story or whatever kind of thing. You know, it's that's what it is for, but but for Brutal Death, because he yep. was like, I remember, um, I remember, you know, one time I went to lose records in Encinitas and he's walking out and, uh, and he was the same dude back then. Hey man, what's the fucking, yeah, what's the fucking man? Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Uh, and he, he was, he was hawking some, uh, uh, unique leader. He would, he was like the local, that guy yeah. was boots to the ground, man, always hustling for brutal death. He Sounds always had unique leader CDs. He would take to all the, he was like the San Diego distro mm -hmm. for um, like unique leader or some shit and was just always on, he was, he just always was on point. And man, I can't think of a better bass player for them. Totally. It, it's oh, perfect. It. Oh, perfect. Dude. And the, the, his bass with the hoof and all that shit, the <laughs> sticks yeah. hot. Like how he plays it like an upright that is just so yeah. it's so sick, dripping with oh, uh style, you know. Eric is a legend. You know? yeah, oh, yeah, just, dude. He's I, thought, hair, I thought it was so cool because he was like, dude, I got a new tattoo. And it was like I I, I don't know what symbol is what uh language it was, but you know, probably some Asian writing, and he's like, it just means focus. And I was like, dude, that's such a fucking cool thing to have on his arm because he's like or maybe yeah. it's just in English. I don't know. I can't. He's remember. a pro, he, man. That's you know, he's got something on his arm that will that's yeah. constantly reminding him to focus, dude. And I'm just like, that's fucking. That's yeah, a totally. dude who seriously loves his fucking job, wants to be fucking the best he can be every time he's on stage. And you could see it, dude. Yep. Yeah. And fucking shout out to fucking Derek Boyer, dude. You'll you'll shit. be on this shit soon. Oh, yeah, Derek Boyer is a badass. Yeah, we're talking about a, a deprecated episode, and dude, that would be so awesome. Yeah, yeah. And AJ and all those guys. Yeah, they're all the best. Try to get Tori or on Corey. Here. Get Cor Tori or Corey. Oh, Tori. Tori. Yeah. Tori. Tori. Yeah. 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 I've hung out with Tori a bunch of times. He's a great guy. He, he was, was the uh, guy. he was the drum tech for yeah. Necrophages when we toured with them. It was Tori. No, was like, yeah, oh, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. That's how I became buddies with him. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's cool. Who yeah, was drumming? Uh, the Roman. Roman, Roman yeah, Guillon Roman. or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Travis, when you worked at Lou's, man, I used to come in all the time, actually. Back in the day. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, that's the dude, dude. That's yeah. funny. Nah, I just went the there dude. the other day. Nice. Yeah? Yeah. Anybody work there that you still know? I mean, Lou. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. They Lou. scaled down considerably, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, no, all the people that I used to work with are long gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... Uh, I still love that place. I love that back road that you can take, like, or the middle road um, through Rancho Santa Fe. You can see the, the house where the, the Heaven's Gate cult, you know, killed themselves. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, sure. uh, Rancho, yeah, yeah, totally. Fun. There's this house, Rancho California. Yeah, there's this yeah, house yeah. Um, between Encinitas and where I live. You can go yep. back there. Yep. And <laughs> um, the house. There's this movie in the or like a. A show a made for TV show in the eighties called This House Possessed. It was kind of like a TV version of like an answer to um, Amityville Horror when that was like real popular. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that shit scared the fuck out of me. It was one of those houses that looks really scary, you know. And you could see that from the road. It's just um, fun. I don't know. I miss. It, it's cool to be back up here, man. I was worried that I would have felt like defeated or some shit like that, but. <laughs> it's not like i moved in with my parents or something we got a house <laughs> yeah but it's cool to be back um where were you at well dude i'm glad you're back up in north county san man. diego i, I know we gotta hang awesome. out I'm let's go Oceanside. to fucking let's go to anita's dude oh dude fuck yeah man. favorite fucking place the one on um pch the one on the oh and the anita's close highway oh dude oh dude best. i'm i i had What's my birthday party there Really? It, right before the fucking pandemic, dude. Oh shit! What's, there, what's, I mean, what they, they, you can go sit there now and eat. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I've been yeah, going. Yeah. I've been going. We're in red tier again, so we're, we can go out. Yeah. You know, it's coming. Nice. Through. What kind of <laughs> what kind of food is it? It's sit down Mexican bomb. Oh, dude, nice food. The Taqueria. tequila shrimp is out of control. Oh, <laughs> just, I, 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 amazing, dude. I really like their beans. Yeah. Sweet. Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah they make sick. They, they make the uh, They make sick uh, micheladas too. You can get them. Uh, vegan Michelada. or vegetarian too oh you sick can, right on yeah just no clamato have them put fucking yep the v8 bloody or, mary yeah bloody mary. yeah or, or uh, that's, that's how, I, how I make them i make them with v8 at home yeah 
Yeah, Mich- like you like you're doing something healthy with it. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's, then it's defeated yeah. by all the sodium. There was one time where I was like super into fucking uh, just eating super clean and I was going away for a weekend and I got these like green drinks that I was going to mix with vodka. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing, dude? Yeah, I'm like, work. it doesn't work. As soon as you put the alcohol in, it's like all it is is the sugar that's in it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's it. But Damn dude, it. Go ahead. I was gonna say, dude, like my my like that brewery that we jammed at last night with Diego. You know, like you can cruise out there anytime, man. We can do like a what is it? Hang on, Oceanside Brewing Company. Oh, okay. Yeah, I gotta. I got. I mean, I can access like like Wednesdays. We're doing jams there pretty much yeah. every night. So every week, you know. So yeah, Joseph's cruising down, and uh, yeah, man, we got the place to ourselves. There's no one, no, like no public coming in. So, Red. You know, keep shout keep out me. Tomas. Yep. My homie, yeah. So come join us, man. That'd be sick. Yeah. Can't wait till <laughs> this, you know, vaccination shit's all yeah cycled yeah. through and things can sure. start feeling like normal again. I just I feel like a dick when I go to these places and sit down to eat. I don't know. I can't shake it. Like we yeah we did it. We did, we went to Anita's. Like I don't know. I could count on one hand how many times we've gone out and sat down at a place since the pandemic started sure and anita's was like three of them yeah uh so it's like <laughs> totally uh, ollie i think we took you there yes we did anita's is the place like on the is it the wh- place where, when we came back from la well i think so yeah 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 oh sick you've been there i'm that like place two blocks sick, yeah. it's just like two blocks from my place right now yeah that's sick man it was sick actually that drink uh what, what we drank again the Michelinas or Micheladas, Michel- yeah. Uh, Michel- 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 yeah, yeah. Because most places, <laughs> most places use clamato, and I won't eat that. Yeah, clam, clam, juice. clam juice. Yeah, yeah. I've been um, looking for this in Montreal. It doesn't exist. Clamato like, or any or no, no, no. Clamato, or Micheladas, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or just Mexican cantina. It doesn't exist. Every like Mexican place is. Right. Trust me, it's, it's probably a good thing. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> exist. In we're we're, we're <laughs> really uh, we're very uh, conservative. Picky. Well, picky or whatever, like yeah. um, about <laughs> especially the with yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or we, the places we got to go, yeah, because we know where all the six spots Colinas, are. Man. Yeah. yeah, I do beg to differ because there was a spot. About the... There was a spot in Quebec City. We played a show with the Faceless there, and after we were done. We were walking around and um, there was this fucking random restaurant that just opened, had no signs. It was just a guy in a grill. And he was like, what? You want a Are burrito? Like, and he started cutting Is up like, all the fresh shit. And he like, did all, like, it was like doing like fucking tricks with it and shit. Well, that was amazing. The, the, we all the, got the, burritos and they're the fucking best burritos I've ever had. And it was in Quebec City. He was the trying te- to the do test that. Is ha- the yeah. test is what they do for salsas. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. T- yeah. To me, that defines how good it's going to be. Like, yeah. Cause yeah. It, no, you sure. know, if you, if you see a bottle of Tabasco sitting there, just move on. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go somewhere or, or else. Or oh, yeah, else. Go get a falafel somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. No, they literally like it was it was the most fresh produce, most fresh meat. I mean, did you all- see the list? Did you see where he ordered it from, dude? Did you see when it came in? Did you see all that? I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> like, what tour was that? <laughs> it's like, a lot of right borders now. to have to get <laughs> no, yeah. But yeah, no, but sauce you, is a big thing. Like over in San Jose, you? there's a fucking place that um, called La Vix. I don't know if you've ever been there, Travis. It's, it's called La Vix, or La Victoria. <laughs> and uh there's two there's two spots there. And uh they have this sauce that they just like sell in like a one of those like you know, like ketchup bottle kind of things. And um, yeah. people just there was a that a famous comic just went there and bought like all like seventy bottles of it like bought just like wiped him out of it and was like handing it out to everyone, but it's a uh, it's definitely like and, and if you ask anyone from around there they're like oh fuck that place you know it's one of those places where it's like they don't like because all the tourism that it, it brings yeah. but if you ever stop through uh, San Jose check out uh, La Victoria I love uh, you know being even being a San Diego person I love. Uh, Bay Area burritos, man. Yeah, I was going to say love. Bay Area does have some good spots, but compared to San Diego, it's totally it's different. Dra- it's, it's, dra- still it's fucking... drastically different, and people try. You know, it's like the East Coast West Coast rap feud. It's just yeah. like, all right, well, they're <laughs> they're both great. And they both have the <laughs> quality. No, it's good. Totally, totally. Yeah. But, I had my opinion on that though. What? <laughs> I, I well it's like when I first moved up there it was like oh they put beans and all these different things and I was like in a carne sauce or whatever you know but it's different like for a, a veggie burrito of course you know yeah like, see like, and that is 
See, I, I actually don't really have much yeah. of a horse in this race because <laughs> yeah, it's different. Um, I guess I'm you know, about, yeah, no, it's totally. stupid for me to even sit here and say, well, this place is the best because you know you guys have. Like, I mean, yeah, I have to. But, we have people have to go out of their way for us, <laughs> for Josh yeah, and I being vegetarians no, but, or whatever. I just like the time. I just realized that as I'm talking, I'm like, oh wait, shit, veggie. Yeah, yeah. but I. Dude, <laughs> Do your thing. Wasn't it like so, Rico's or something was really good out there or something? Is that a place? There's Rico's there? Tacos and fucking um, yeah. Right. It, I mean, it, Casey's brought me there. Yeah, by yeah. by, I mean, uh, by Solana Beach, right? There's one. Uh, yeah. So uh, re- like the main Rico's place is in Encinitas, I think, like on Encinitas yeah. Boulevard. Yeah. And like yeah, yeah. And we used to go there in high school, and dude, we would get the bean and rice, like black beans, rice, avocado, potato, yeah. like you know those kind of burritos. Oh, it's I would so get the good. I would get the potato roll yeah. tacos with no cheese. Dude, Valentino's. What about that? But down by the airport, that place. Yes, right? Valentine's. Dude, those Wait, potato Valentine's? tacos. Yes, Valentine's. Dude. Sorry, Valentine's. Sorry, now yeah. it's that stupid place that was on. Um, oh, so one of those big, big dude. Uh, yeah. TV like dry diners, drive-ins, dive. Or it was on oh, one yeah, of yeah. those big fucking TV shows. Oh, and that, yeah. Lucha Libre. That Lucha Libre oh, taco. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> uh, it's all well, about, about Valentine's, dude. Oh, Karina. Yeah, Valentine's was rad. I would get the uh, yeah. black yeah. bean burrito, no cheese. So, in uh, my family is from mainly from uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mm-hmm. And the, there's uh, the green chili, the, uh, yeah, the hot hatch. hatch green chili, mm-hmm. and like all that stuff. Like out there to me, I mean, it's kind of got a Tex Mex vibe a little bit to it, but mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like a it's it's a weird offshoot of it. Like it's yeah. um they a lot have of the, black beans. It's it's very Tex Mexy or whatever. Yeah, well if you if you go to I mean, you have to go to the certain spots, it's kinda of like San Diego. Like if you just walk in there, people will be like, Oh, you went there, like what the fuck's your problem? Dude, you did you ever there. go to Twisters? Oh, I've been to Twisters, yeah. That's the the breaking bad shit. But that, right. that actually uh, comes El from El uh, Hermanos. <laughs> so it actually comes from a place called the Hurricanes, which is the the main spot where you need to go. Twisters is an offshoot that like oh, okay. kind of a popular it's, it's like an old fifties diner. That's like a Mexican food diner called Hurricanes, and they just got the you know the best green chili and yeah. the be- and they have these things called disasters, disaster burritos, uh-huh. and it's just like they basically like get a burrito, they cover it in green chili, put a bunch of f- like these curly fries that aren't seasoned. dude. That's the thing. On it. Yeah, <laughs> that's totally like people talk about Poyos Hermanos or whatever the name of that. Yeah, uh, yeah. on Breaking, Breaking Bad, Bad yeah. I'm like. It's a the, the actual That's place. Twisters. Twisters is a fucking stoner's dream, dude. <laughs> totally, totally. Burrito with red and I, I always get red and green, just and half green. and half, and then fucking curly fries. It's just a dude. Starchy <laughs> I, I and fucking cheese, cheese on top of it. Best. Burritos. <laughs> yeah. California burritos are the shit, dude. So I can see oh, that the shit, curly man. fries would work on top of that shit. Yeah, that's oh, Ollie's man. favorite. Ollie always that's, demands the California burrito and yeah. uh, Kalimas. Dude. I can't, dude, I miss that thing so much the I other know. day. Like two weeks ago, I was like, I was on YouTube and I typed top 10 <laughs> best. You can't, dude, you can't get it up there. Burrito. <laughs> hey, trap. Could you make Number one? Th- no, because we don't have the right tortilla here. Yeah. And I was looking oh. for the right ingredient and Amazon, honestly, brother. Not the same. It's not the same. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta vacuum seal them and fucking <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here, here's <laughs> the thing. There's something about Mexican the, the ingredients in Mexican food that I don't think it travels well or something. I mean, you yeah. could, why like would it be so tortillas? Yeah, and why would the, the taste of the beans be so fucking different somewhere else? Yeah, like, you're right. It's Dude, weird. I had like a I had a Mexican grocery store next to my place, and honestly. It feel like so different to me. I'm like, no, mm-hmm. it's not the right thing, man. Totally, it's not the same. Yeah, yeah. On the I'm really top 10 on YouTube. Colimas was number three. Oh, what would best? What they best say first? California. Oh, California Fuck. burrito. Got it. Yeah, poor California burrito. Yeah, because you got to remember then, that then, L.A. has a lot of spots, and people swear by them, yeah. but no, yeah, L.A. Can... <laughs> like personal opinion. Because yeah. second spot, dude, was for GVs. You remember uh, that place next to uh, Brick by Brick, JVs. JVs. They were on the list. Yeah. Oh, surprising. Number two. But right across Number the street from there, the hit, the hidden jewel, Nikos. What's that? <laughs> Nikos. Was that Nikos. Nikos. That Nikos, Nikos. Right. It's yeah. across the street from it, JVs, and Nikos and down, bombs. and they close at something stupid like six fifty one p.m. or some lame <laughs> time. So, bam, dudes can usually never get in there. 
but that's that's the spot that's greasy san diego mexican food that's what's funny too is i'll, I'll I have a few places here i've gotten fucking poutine it's like they're starting to open up to the poutine stuff here and even yep, now that's been a thing yeah yeah. and i went to trader joe's kind of recently and it's like oh it's like poutine in a bag it's mm-hmm. like it's like ready to go you just like yeah it's like fry it out and then thing. cover it in this shit they've had yeah. that for a, hu- a few years i tried it and it was Dude, I should, I yeah, it's not open legit, my own but... thing and do like a california burrito poutine oh Whoa, <laughs> bro. you might be onto something dude that's, that's just great. Gravy you know, in your burrito, Jesus Christ! Well, that's shit to Trader fries. Joe's, bro. Yeah, Trader Joe's fucking Gravy, little potato, poutine, mm, fucking microwave pretty. burritos, dude. I'm, I would, I would try it right now, dude. <laughs> that sounds great. I'm yeah. I think the only time I try it is right now after <laughs> six white claws. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm down to try it. Only six. All right. Is everybody yeah. drinking? Uh, uh, yeah, I am. Yeah. Sorry. Always. I'm not. I'm light drinking, but I'm also I'm puffing on this uh fucking white claws. The, the, it's the this, best uh, podcast oh. stuff. You know what? I don't even hate those things. I actually no, I wanna, actually they're oh, pretty good. Javis, your video with the on tour, <laughs> that's the funniest shit, dude. Oh, well, the, dude. The, it's not even like see that's the thing. I, I tend to be skeptical about stuff that pops or you know, or gets real big at once or, Popular, or that everybody's yeah. into. I yeah, kind of like, whatever, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, beginning yeah. Of uh, the white claw. But yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's just fun to poke fun at. Oh yeah, that's hilarious. Quo, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that's so much fun. You know, no, uh, I just... speaking of you poking fun, uh, you've actually been in a video this holiday season with a past uh, Cali Death podcast uh, guest, Riley McShane. You got oh yeah, a a. a, a very uh interesting cover of a, a classic oh, christmas yeah. favorite that dude. was so funny that was yeah. good man I last actually, christmas I right yeah. Yeah. he yeah, asked me to do christmas. it like four days before we filmed it and we were pretty i mean you know i, I that was actually the only time <laughs> i have been around that at that time the only time i had been around people unmasked and it felt weird i mean it was just him and me and his girlfriend and yeah just yeah, yeah. people yeah yeah you know whatever and we filmed it yeah. ourselves or whatever but it was so like, was like oh my god <laughs> did you know, shake his hand should we be doing this you just <laughs> crawled out of your cave and you're like <laughs> i think man i i feel like i might have gotten it dude because actually right after that video like two weeks later riley got it mm, oh, Jesus. oh my god that's well, right I yeah that. so i was just like oh well, fuck weird. yeah it's like, you know i can't be getting this shit because my parents like i moved up here yeah. To Escondido to be, uh, <laughs> wanted to get the fuck out of. We just wanted to get a place, really. Um, that yeah. Um, and uh, this spot just opened up, and uh, we knew we wanted to be in Escondido to be closer to my parents. My, uh, you know, my, they're getting up there and mm-hmm. they need help and stuff. So, uh, yeah. move closer to be uh, to be closer to them. I forgot yeah, why too. I was talking about this. What were we just um, and the COVID thing too? The- oh yeah, so yeah, the, to yeah. be around them, they're you know late seventies, so risk, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To, and my dad's yeah. got horrible health issues, so uh, yeah. we you know um, definitely I've been was- trying to do the right thing as much as possible. But thankfully, they're they're vaccinated, so now I yep. pretty soon I'll be able to hug my mom for the first time in a year. Yep. Yeah, both for you, for both for me. Yeah, yeah it sucks. Crazy, yeah, I, I actually it's funny that you bring up the mask thing because I. I'll see like videos of like groups of people in the seventies. I'm like, what the fuck are they doing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, my brain is so in the mask, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a, I'll say like a concert yeah. from back in the day and I'll be like, what, the, why are they all scant? That's all fucked up. What are they doing? Like, like oh hey, no. I, yeah, I, I <laughs> honestly, I really do think we can just get used to it. This is, things aren't yeah. going to go back to how. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. No. Yeah. But not It'd the way we know them. Sure. There's going to be all this, especially for the first year or two, there's going to be all this protocol and all these transition back. There's going to be some people that got some PTSD from this shit that will never change. Totally. You know, we're probably going to see people with masks for a long time, but that's, that's however anybody's going to feel comfortable, but it's like, you know, just getting it fucking settled down and back to as normal as we possibly can. So there was yeah. people with masks play some metal again, dude. Just walking, you just see them down the street, just people with masks on before, you know, like back in the day, like people that were just like hyper, you know, yeah. freaked out about germs and shit. That uh, was- LA, Los Angeles, they're, you'd see people wearing masks once in a while just because the air sucks so bad. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. That was the recent, like a year, a year before that, we had a really bad fire up here and I had to wear a mask oh, yeah. for a f- couple of weeks because the, pollution was so bad and uh 
Okay. Yeah. You just, it's kind of, yeah, it's like these different things now. Well, so here's the thing now is if you play a show for like 10 people that like in your mind, like as of right now, that equals like a million people or like, or <laughs> yeah. like a thousand oh, people. Yeah. You're like, whoa, like, like it's so it's valuable. Limit capacity, you know? capacity yeah. is there. It's like I, gold. I, it's like so amazing. And then, I hope it's not like that where it's, I know, you know, I know. 15, like, yeah. 1500 cap rooms. You do two shows a day at a hundred <laughs> yeah. people. Yeah, like, no, no. Right. You're like, no, no. Not, yeah, I know. It's, not <laughs> Done. it's been great. See you guys. <laughs> Don't want to. Do you guys think so? Fuck this. Yeah, do no. you guys so think like the metal scene will be affected by that? I mean, like, uh, no, like, let's say, let's say tomorrow it's... we have green light to start show like I... normal. You think people are hungry? It's not long term, you know. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm my scared opinion. or just yeah, I think that it's going to go well, back it, to eventually it's going to be like again normal, and like, even if it did, for sure, yeah. for sure, but metal, just take metal is adapted through so many yeah, different, but, you, uh, you know decades of of yeah. just human adaptation so it's like we we made sure but that we to, to always be able to do what like we, we do. know you know uh, touring like we know it like there's yeah. so many bands on on tour at the same time like before everything shut down last year dude in montreal we had five shows we had like dying fetus defeated sanity yeah. origin uh name it like oh it's too much yeah. you know what i mean it's yeah, yeah everybody's gonna is come it, out at, at the same is time is it gonna bring yeah. a certain like okay well ho- a think... show or two maybe three shows per month yeah, will make yeah. sense because too much it, it's it's not better like yeah you know. we'll see man it's well, kind of like yeah it's gonna be really a transition know, you know? but i'm i'm like, hope i'm i'm we're all hopeful you know we all want to yeah. get back out there and start playing shows and go to shows Dude, and, i'm dying to go to. back <laughs> we're all just like Jesus. fiending like come on you know i'm actually kind of nervous we want to be safe shows, too but like, i don't know last, like, how to how to, how to like I'm walk around too. a show yeah, yeah. i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know how to conduct myself at a show anymore like, I know, right? like, I'm, like, like, I'm like hello yeah, how, are like, how are you how are you hello what's that's, going on that's what i'm not i'm gonna have a good reason not to shake people's hands yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? but can you imagine them being like on the uh, on a big tour with a big band you know sometimes their management or their crew there they act like you're nothing and uh. can you imagine now post-covid what's going to be like no no you're right you're I, I know what you mean i know you mean out, just a good point outside. just the you small dynamics everything. of what we're used to it's, He's gonna totally. be different. Totally different. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. see, dude. Interesting. There's gonna be a bigger protocol, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. <laughs> but you yeah. Meta will never die. Stage. <laughs> also <laughs> mixed with the demand of people just like dying to go to shows and dying to play shows, but like mixed with the safety, it's like yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like this pent up thing, but gotta be safe but yeah man like we all want to do it so bad so speaking of masks what was the influence behind the butthole mask <laughs> <laughs> well i came up with the the, the front and then, <laughs> and then dave dave goes we should just put a fucking butthole on the other side can we do that and i was like yes we can and i'm we're i'm going to do that i'm signing up <laughs> Uh, why? I don't know. <laughs> just thought it would look funny, and <laughs> dude, kind of. W- the first time I saw my family uh, last year <laughs> during the whole pandemic thing, I had the bottle. I, yeah. Hey, what's up, mom? <laughs> I had the bottle. I'm Mr. Thompson. Yeah. Remember in the South, South Park episode? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thompson. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm Mr. Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It was a great move. I, I saw like when that got released, I saw like, you know, all the story, the you know, social media stories of people with their butthole masks. Yeah. <laughs> like, it actually mm-hmm. took off. And it know. got through. It got through. Like the 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 algorithm or whatever didn't pick up, you know, oh, there's a butthole. <laughs> yeah. There was a there was another interview I watched today because I was just kind of doing a little background. The uh it was you on Loudwire doing an interview with that with Graham and uh there, someone posted like they're like at 145 travis predicts the the pandemic <laughs> and like i listen to it and you're like yeah it's like a you know like a pandemic hitting or something like that he was like totally like it was like december 
2019 or something you were just like yeah like, or maybe you guys were going back and forth or something like that because you were talking i, about I like went the... back there to do some press for death atlas so it was uh maybe like uh october okay 19 or something like that but yeah yeah i went back there flew back to new york and did a bunch of press stuff and um that was one of them yeah i mean you guys, i mean i know bands like uh i mean i'm into like nerdy prog stuff now but um on top of everything else but there's this band uh haken that came out with uh the album virus mm -hmm. and they were kind of it, it was a it was a based based off their last album so they went last album and then the story went to virus and then but that was already you know it was they came up with that like in 2018 and um they were about to release it and they had some they were basically thinking about changing the name because it was too on the head a little bit you know and they were thinking oh that really people, uh, yeah i was thinking did you because you guys with the plague stuff did you did you have any of that or you're just like fuck yeah we nailed it <laughs> was there any kind of like uh like double thoughts about you know having that bring it was annoying it was really yeah, fucking yeah. annoying yeah um because um i don't like people putting words in my mouth i don't totally. like People, uh, I, while I've always left things open to interpretation for the most, as much as, you know, I can, um, I don't like it when people put words in my mouth or whatever. So to, or, or to tell me or others what I'm thinking or what I was thinking um, during certain things or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so that got, a, it gets annoying, you know, seeing people totally. take things out of context. And that's what I was talking about earlier with, <laughs> um whatever um but really dude if you talk about stuff that has any kind of relevance to current events current world times or whatever you're gonna it's just it, it, it's gonna happen um i think scientists were predicting this for years that something like this or that we were setting ourselves up for something like this so um i I, I don't I haven't put too much thought to it man I, I've been yeah, too yeah. busy uh, the, all the conspiracy theories and all this dumb bullshit it's just like I don't know I'm probably more inclined to believe it was made in the lab or whatever but um, um, I don't know it's it's an unfortunate thing but it's also it's, we're talking you know our band while I don't consider it death metal we come from a death, death metal aesthetic it obviously has that at the, at the very least um so if it's the kind of shit we talk about you know yeah yeah, yeah. end of the world or satan it, or whatever the fuck it's gonna be you know it's I, um totally I, be something I, fucked I, up. I i think your whole like album layouts subject matter on like the last couple like or even the last few but like that like especially the last two like with the first or, or the, the the very new one and the the most recent one before that but with like death death atlas and all that like it's like it's like so rad it's like that whole structure totally like ties into that and it's like what a coincidence but it kind of makes sense even before i that. mean like, we back we're, then we're yeah. we probably we probably bought ourselves a little bit of time or whatever yeah <laughs> or a yeah, little yeah. bit of relevance yeah. by by having that but it, i mean obviously it was a coincidence and, and stuff and you know things like that it's happen rad, and, and it's yeah. it, it, it has i think actually to answer the question the original question i think it kind of has actually maybe helped us yeah um but at first yeah it was kind of like just annoying seeing uh, uh, i don't know we put out that shirt that was actually that was actually gabe sieber's idea oh yeah <laughs> so he sent me that design he's all dude you guys should do do something with this and i was just like can i it's like shit yeah go ahead and i was like fuck yeah <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Right. t-shirts stickers buttons <laughs> or whatever but um because it was it was just funny you know it was bring back the plate there's got to be a, an amount of rea realism, an amount of fantasy, an amount of mm -hmm. current relevance, or idea, uh, uh, world events, and, and keeping up with that. That's kind of what I've always done. Like it's the whole cattle decapitation started out being this vegetarian uh, or like a vegetarian, vegan, whatever focused. Um, mostly on turning the tables on humans, animal, animal rights, animal cruelty, the, the mm -hmm. state of the United States um, meat industry. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, like I was saying, it, it, there's only so long you can really talk about that kind of stuff. And, and um, started moving on to having each album be, have like a central focus to where there's even a few songs that reference what's going on on the cover or what's going on with the theme and all that shit. Mm -hmm. But um, it has to have things peppered throughout there. Like obviously forced gender reassignment has zero to do with fucking uh, landfills or, you know, um, with the, the, mm -hmm. the concepts of a monolith of inhumanity that have mm -hmm. these recurring each, there's songs on there that are almost like you could say they're almost about they're all about the same thing but they're told differently or whatever mm -hmm. and um i don't know i like to switch it up i like to have yeah. stuff in yeah. there i've never been able to write i've never tried to though write a concept record where it's like it tells but a story the story from beginning the crazy to part end. with that atlas it's also that it's it's so perfect the way the album is made it's the, uh, lyrics wise and with the whole theme it's it's the end you know what i was really like, the most... end of our world it, it has a finality to it, it a it's very heavy strange. weight to it of, of finality so people are like you know well, what are you going to do now and i trust me i have it figured out it's freaky but we're going to do it and um and what i was like what i was really stoked on was the way when when i realized and we did the vinyl splits because you have when you when you lay out a, a record an lp if it's especially if it's a two disc like this was the record was long enough to be a two disc. The way the tracks fell on, uh, well, like the way it was had to be broken up time wise for mm -hmm. the um, to be at forty five RPM spread across two LPs, four sides. Uh, the way they fell on uh, onto that the those records, I, I've never seen anything like it. We we don't have that kind of luck. The the conceptually because each side starts out with like a intro or something is whereas if you listen to it on the mm -hmm. cd the whole thing kind of goes in one shot it's kind of seamless yeah but on the know. lps we actually had to make seams we couldn't have two songs going to each other otero had to have one decay and then the next one starts with whatever intro or whatever so if you look at the the way the sequence goes i don't think we'll ever be able to achieve that again <laughs> it was it, it was That's an accident awesome. and it's it's my things like that are what I consider my pride and joy. The just dumb layout stuff. You know, I, I yeah. I've, I've been doing tape layouts and CD or whatever layouts since I was a kid. Um, when I would take fucking music from Metallica and not Metallica but Megadeth and, and whoever did you know the the main thrash and speed metal bands whoever did like instrumentals. You know how every album back then would have like an instrumental. I would take that fucking instrumental and do lyrics and vocals to it and take a fucking mm -hmm. uh, karaoke machine dude. so you could play on one side and then record on the other. The and same I same exact shit I did, dude. Really? That's how I fucking developed the fucking that's guttural technique. I want to hear your vocals, layering. dude, over like Me I want to hear it. I had a dual yeah. tape. I wrote oh, like, lyrics. I fucking made the tape. I made the tape layout. Dude, was, let's hear it. Oh, the band was shit. called The Infected. And oh, I, I remember using Into the Lungs of Hell from Megadeth, you know, writing lyrics over okay, that. And cool. Stupid. I mean, I was a kid. I was I bet it, I bet it 12 great. or whatever. <laughs> but I did that for bass, man. Like <laughs> for songs that didn't have any bass, like uh, the song on, on the Sound of Perseverance, I think it's Voice of the Soul. Yeah. Mm. 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 When I was like 16 years old, I wrote a bass line for that song. Right. <laughs> and then I was like, shit. Okay, that was my, the first time I wrote something like, I, and like, I don't know, it was really. Yeah, that was, my, bring alarm. Like a new, that was my alarm a new, for like, like three years. Dude. Sound, a new color to the song. And I was like, shit. Yeah. Can you imagine I do the same thing, but for a song that I play with the same, the, the band like that'd be great because huh? nobody was doing that but like not soloing bass but mm -hmm. you know there's yeah. no there's not many yeah. bass forward bands <laughs> no. Pavel, in, what's in up, this dude? metal, in metal <laughs> at least. And, except joel's favorite band who? <laughs> yeah, Pavor? It's, yeah it's inside joke with Pavor. i'm not a big fan anyway <laughs> seriously <laughs> so i mean good, dude. I actually, did i nail that one 
You nailed before? you just nailed it. Yep, yep. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> it's dude. the only band that, that that I know of in in you know uh, super bass forward extreme metal. The, yeah, it's the most bass forward. What's that? <laughs> yeah. You know who that is, right? That's, That's the right same here guy? from Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Yeah, Anthony dude. talks to him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bethlehem. Dude, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. He actually uh oh, Travis, you might be interested in it. He did a uh a solo album in 2019. Um that was one easily probably my album of the year. Dude, I, I fucking loved, loved it record. too, dude. I love I that shit. I fucking love Fuck, it. Fuck, there's dude. nothing like it, dude. There's dude. nothing like that thing. That I we listened to that non constantly during the death that was recording yeah, session, dude. Yeah. I, I fucking love hearing that, dude, because so that, I really album? appreciate the shit dude, out of that, dude. It's fucked up. It is I'm one of the coolest things to come out in years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fucking rules, dude. I love that fucking dude. Yeah, hell yeah. What's dude. it called? Oh, sick, dude. Just put me on the spot, dude. It's all in <laughs> you're, you're so I mean, interested, well, it's Joe. It's mine. Okay. mine so I, it's, no, like, it's a different band. Yeah, it's, for, it's oh, it's under dude. his name. It's under he's it's just Reiner Landferman, and then it's a, like a chick doing ballet on the cover. Yeah, it was made it was made for I ordered some the ballet from out him there or something. I've ordered the art book from him because it came in an art book. For, I'm I'm a, like a collector of that type of shit. Yep. I like to have obscure. There's like 50 copies of this. Did you open the, it? I, I dude. Okay. Full disclosure. I didn't open I mine. Two. Full disclosure. Oh, I, I was gonna two, do dude. that. I was gonna do that. <laughs> I bought two, dude. I bought two. One to open and one to fucking leave sealed, dude. Because it comes in a beautiful package, dude. It's it comes beautiful. In that, that black paper. It's all fucking. Yeah, I couldn't bring myself to open it, shit, dude. I was yeah. Like, <laughs> I got it off of the band find camp the, or something. Yeah, so I, totally, dude. I, I, I have access to the tracks or whatever, so I didn't mm-hmm. I don't really care about. Yeah, and the, and the book's still cool as fuck to look through, but yeah, I, I know where you're at, dude. If you're going to get one copy and then it shows up well, like the, that, dude. He, he put he put like a video or, or images of something of the inside of the book, so I'm like, well, I can see it here. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh, Sorry. Here we oh, go. we got it. We got it. I'm hijacking. Yeah. Too. Boom, there it is. Oh, 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 shit. That's fancy. Mein Wort in Diner. Diner Dunkelheit. Yeah, it's actually, you know, it's a lot about a, a past relationship. You know, there's the p- journey of heartbreak to seems like, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can't even Remember that thing, dude? Yeah. I, do, I do have this. I was this. playing I it nonstop in the my, studio. Uh, oh, it's great, dude. And then another. Yeah, just he is fucking crazy. Great shreds. Yeah. yeah, dude. And then that Bethlehem shit, it's just that album is fucking ridiculous, uh. obviously. Yeah, His vocals are just yeah, another like it, really, it's like really the agonizing out. version of it. You know what the story behind that is? Uh, Fucking, you can remind us right he now. He was just he was just recording them. He was producing them, and it was like their singer left or, or something. He didn't finish the record or whatever, so he mm-hmm. stepped in and did the, all the vocals. Boom! Wow. Next thing you know, everybody fucking uh, this guy accidentally stepped on the fucking landmine, dude, and just mm-hmm. it, dude. Was that oh, the album where they were hell. like, where they were like on, on the inside, they're all shooting like heroin? <laughs> well, he's like, I think he was, I don't know Just, if he was really doing it or simulating <laughs> it, it. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, it's Dick dark metal, car. dude. It's yeah, yeah. very depressive shit. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Definitely love, borderline love, love suicidal. Yeah. You know? But yeah. it's a great fucking record. That's a great record. And then, yeah. So those types of vocals, he brings them back for that yeah. project. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, but, <laughs> love it, dude. It sounds that dude. sounds funny, oh, but it doesn't oh, like that. Oh. But it, oh, when you yeah, get yeah, in that, that, when you get in that vibe and you understand exactly what he's doing, dude, it's a fucking great. Well, job, uh, the woman they have now doing vocals is fucking sick, dude. She's up there with him easily. Hell yeah, yeah. I've um, seen the, some of the videos. Yeah. God, what's her fucking name? I forgot. She's in that band. Us. Yeah. Uh, something. Satanic slaughter cult or what? what the oh, uh, dark, darkened nocturne. Yeah, d- yeah. Sorry, sorry. That's the drummer of Pavor's uh, black metal band. That's he drums. He drums on all the records. Oh, really? Darkened, darkened nocturne slaughter. Slaughter cult. cult. That's funny. There it is. That's dude. funny. You're right about the bass thing, dude. It is kind of like all right, all right, because he produced and and he is the bassist and, and yeah. stuff in Pavor. That's his baby. Yeah. So it's funny to hear. It. Oh, so the, he does be the shreds. Yeah, he's a shredding bass player, dude. Yeah, yeah. So the that's like a project where everybody was just like, you. "Let's go as extreme as we possibly can with this," you know. I love those records. It. I love those totally, records. Totally, dude. Fuck yeah! Far cry from Bethlehem. What's up, Joel? Travis. <laughs> I, I, no, I, 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 I feel, feel like, like Travis could like do. We're this. turning Joel right now. Wait, wait, wait! No, no, no! Hold on. 
I feel like Travis could like do those kind of vocals like that painfully. I mean, I'm very course, heavily inspired you already, by that. You already do by that guy. <laughs> yeah, dude. Of course he does. We call him yeah. ghosts. Um, it's actually, I feel it was more of a Luke LeMay started it. Uh, not, he didn't, it's not that he started it, but for us, uh, Obscuro was such a huge inspiration. You know, his vocals are very distinct. Oh, Luke LeMay yeah. is amazing. We, I, I do layers of those once in a while. We call them ghosts. The first time I heard that was on the Dark Throne album. You know, the probably, the, yeah, yeah. Dark Throne. Super okay. weird ghost voice out of nowhere. it was on the dark throne album. haunting yeah. but maybe yeah. dark throne took that from gorgats because it was well, between leviathan does uh, it the first like, and the second it's old it's an old school thing you know people have been doing it for years but yeah. the one that took it to like operatic extremes was land from him Mm -hmm. Reiner, you know, he just yep. fucking. Speaking of off product extremes, another project that you were involved with that I fucking love is uh, you were on the not the newest, or I, I'm sorry if you were on the newest, because but the previous Igor, oh. you did a couple of spots oh, on that God. shit, right? Yeah, so good. So <laughs> that's good, a band dude. I've been dying to try to get out here to do yes. with us. Like, dude, you fit fucking please, so well on both those. I think it was two or maybe three tracks you did on that yeah. previous one. So, um, sinus sil, sinoid, so, uh, savage sinusoid there you go yeah I so i got into it with nostril he's all about noses dude like we're, yeah no. <laughs> yeah no shit <laughs> you're right i never even thought about that weird dude revelations <laughs> Uh, no, but they, yeah, dude. No, both both killer fucking spots that dude. i that stand out in my head right now it, it was perfect i knew you got it have you heard uh, her album uh the the, the opera I haven't, singer but i love i love when i love her what she contributes to the project too so i'd love to check out what she's, she's doing she's fucking phenomenal that. man yeah she's it's called bryson and live Bryson. too you see the live videos of them oh yeah yeah killer. i've never oh, been yeah. able to see them live unfortunately we well just you see you youtube it or whatever and yeah oh i've seen it i know what you're talking about she, those she, live videos are insane yeah Dude, is Erlen gonna go? Is Erlen gonna go on tour with them? Is he gonna be a part of the live act? That would be that? sick. Erlen uh, Casper bass on the last two. Yeah, he oh. did bass for both right. albums. Yeah, but not all all the tracks. Uh, yeah, I think the guy from uh, they the added a drummer. Five. They added a drummer, but that's I think the extent of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a big mishmash of so much shit going on. Yeah. Yeah, I think all that other stuff would probably be something that whatever the fuck Gautier is doing back there behind the laptop. I don't, it's I don't insane. know. Insane. Yeah. 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 How many how many singers they had? Like three or two? Two. There's two guy, one chase. The two. dude, his or, his project, uh I don't Lola? know how to say it. X O O X. I know what you're talking yeah. about. O X X O X O O X. Mm -hmm. Oh that yeah, shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I play that like scary, yeah, I play that like every night in the fucking in the yeah. bandwagon. Yeah, yeah, that guy's definitely a, a a killer brain, dude. That guy's yeah, dude. a killer brain. Um he is the best. We had a we had a, a fan ask a question about the I think we can cycle back to this because it's kind of relevant to the guy behind the laptop thing, uh, the what he called the the bumper tracks on on Death Atlas. And you're talking oh, yeah. about how they fit so perfectly. <laughs> he just wanted to know more about uh, how those were created. Was that mostly you or all you, Travis? Or... Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. Um. Just you know synthesizer whatever i'm pretty sure i want i i you know it, it, it seems it thing. seems pathetic i should know this <laughs> i should be able to say yes right off the top of my tongue i believe yeah well whatever it says in the liner notes is legit <laughs> um there's a few things about that like the uh, i had my sister on one of them um okay. basically years ago i kind of took it upon myself to try to make sure that that stuff that intros and stuff find themselves into the recordings because i was already making them for the lives live shows i hate talking to the crowd i personally not a fan of engaging on that level no offense to people it's just i mean listen to my fucking talking voice man i sound like a fucking <laughs> soccer mom you know like i got this high ass talking voice it's fucking annoying um, Damn it gets your ass in the van yeah yeah and i so i i'm not really you don't um, really sound like that my no. engagement i'd rather have be through the, while we're playing you know i'm not yeah, yeah. i hate front men Hey, motherfuckers, you motherfuckers. It's like, <laughs> why do you assume 
everybody has sex with their mom. <laughs> I don't get that. No, but everybody's God. a motherfucker to these guys. So, and I'm, yeah. I'm no different. I don't know what it is. We, uh, we always end up calling people motherfuckers. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm just not, if I could cut as much of that out as possible, I'm going to try to do that. So um, for a while I was, I had this set up and I would do noise and shit between songs. Even it was just like, you know, um, I'd rather let this stuff. I, I don't know. I always liked going and seeing shows and then the atmospheric stuff between songs. Odious mm-hmm. was that to me. Way that's too, dude. It's we much more interesting. In empty space. I mean, we talk over the, all the soundscape <laughs> shit, but there would always be soundscapes, you know? Yeah. It's much more interesting than being called a motherfucker. So. There is I think it keeps or, a, or seeing a, a base level of energy going, too. Night. Yeah. What was that, Ali? You know, some, some bands are like, they do the same speeches every night, no matter what. So See, I hate like, that, too. Fired up! Yeah. <laughs> And I get it. I, people actually, I don't know why, people really respond to that. Um, and I've actually seen people go like, that dude's a horrible front man. He doesn't engage with the audience. I'm just like. <laughs> so the know, guys I, who say the same thing every night, they may not like to engage either, but they found something that they could just like get into like autopilot with. Like, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, I, I get, I get that, it. There's, but, there's but parts that are like some, that. Sometimes, man, when there's no crowd, then you're like, are you fucking funny? Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> like, dude, come on, man, chill out. Jeez, yeah. It's obvious. There's nobody out there. <laughs> yeah. It's cheesy either way, but I, I personally yeah. am... I could do with just having samples in between songs and stuff. Dude, I, I saw man, Master them playing a show without saying a word. Well, it was great. <laughs> it was cool. even better, though. It's cool. I saw we a Master Attack, the album, and it was the same the thing. Right the right ambiance in between songs yeah they like, was we, great. we speak enough in our music just listen to it it's know? always depend of what you want to bring as an artist like uh, as a show like i i know for uh, cattle uh, death atlas the whole thing we had a, a very solid set list it was almost like uh, the album it, it's almost like you're listening to the album but but in between the songs we could play a bunch of classics you know so it was cool so i can remember yeah, we finally i think finally put together what we felt was a good set speeches during the whole set yeah. or yeah you didn't have to talk that much yeah i think i think it was cool though and every time you talk though it was like <sighs> people freaked out yeah. so well i don't yeah when I mean, you have like nine good albums i'm not, i'm all about the show <laughs> so it's pretty cool yeah. when monolith I, was I, I going better put the show that Let, let's put it this way i want to see i want to play the show that i want to see yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. if i pay money to see a show because i was disappointed big time with a lot of bands a lot of bands back then i will not mention any bands, but someone like no i will never disappoint any people that pay ticket to see us because i will Put the same show every night no matter what no matter if i if i'm hungover as fuck or Dude. sick or whatever i'm gonna bring the same shit every night it, or even better because because you know what it is how it is uh if the crowd's on fire yeah you're gonna be, you feed of that energy mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that so montreal show at the medley that, that you're t- that what I was talking about that was insanely loud. Like I was hung over as fuck and barfed on the stairs before I walked in. <laughs> like mm-hmm. before I walked on stage. I was like, yeah, I was fucking there was another show at the medley that you guys played, and it was like a mashup of two tours together. It was like Suffo or and was the haunted? The, the the haunted in darkest hour or something. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I, I think there. like 15 I think bands so, yeah. played. But when you guys played, it was like insane. And you played like what, 15 minutes? Yeah, it was like, <laughs> it was like, like a nonsense. Song. You travel all that <laughs> I know. way to play 15 minutes. <laughs> That's pretty much how, how, how we rolled back then. We had like a Dude, 30 minute set Rexis, max. The original Rexis, at some point, we played for nobody. On the, the Sepultura tour, 
we played and the right. door were still closed and the tour manager was like you guys up now <laughs> like dude there's no one there They're like now yeah so weird okay. just, there will i be remember these anomalies. we were yeah. jamming yeah we, we were just rehearsing songs for the next door like okay let's bring that song back in the set list <laughs> there's no one in there anyway fuck it Actually, the we with uh, Travis, we, we played a song or a, a show with you guys with Necrophagus. It was their first time they ever played in San Francisco. That's when they got robbed and a bunch of stuff. But uh, I was like, beg, it was like Animosity, you guys, Alarum, Arsis, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and Necrophagus. Mm -hmm. And um, yep. we basically like I, I, you know, AOL instant messenger this promoter guy to death until he was like, okay, we'll let you play. Well, you know, we don't pay you anything. You guys can play. Yeah. And so it was the same thing. We started playing and there was just the doors weren't open, <laughs> but they opened as like the, you know, first half of the song People was done. In. and they were slowly, it was like a line around the fucking building, but you know, slowly people started coming in and saying, cool as fuck to see Odious's logo mm -hmm. on that flyer, dude. I, I know. Want, that's all I, I cared about. My man. Archive that shit. I, I got the, it. The, the sad part about uh, the Sepultura tour is Naraxis, we were uh, second band on the bill. The first band was Bonded by Blood. Dude, on that tour, most of the time, they never play. They didn't play at it's all. Because really shit happens. And, oh, we're <laughs> late. So like, okay, so take down the drums. Naraxis <laughs> is starting to set. So, and dude, Naraxis, we played, I remember a show, I think it was in Kentucky or something, we played four minutes we played a song and we stopped before the end oh my god <laughs> i think it are you going for like world Travel record fastest set this way to play four minutes man. can you imagine jesus oh, oh we were on tour with fucking cryptopsy in 0405 or what the first tour we did with cryptopsy where we met him and everything and uh one show we are we had this vehicle trouble so we showed up Obviously, Crypt Cryptopsy ended up having to play. And when we showed up, Flo actually let us fucking jump on their fucking gear and play. Oh, like, damn. we did, we had this, it was called the Garden Medley. <laughs> <laughs> it was like five songs from the first two records, which back then our songs were 30, 40 seconds long. And um, we did them all back to back. It was like the whole song was like, three minutes or two and a half minutes or something so they let us play like a two and a half minute set or whatever the fuck it was <laughs> on their gear for the for their crowd and uh so fucking grind core because we showed up we 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 tried making the show but man that's the insane, like, man. those guys are sick just i love the cryptops fuck yeah oh, flows yeah. flows the man Wait. yeah flows fucking just awesome. think, thinking about uh, it i'm like yeah. yeah i just remember a show in Tucson, arizona and it was like a festival on a Tuesday <laughs> out of nowhere. And they start yeah. the show at 1 p.m. And check it out. First band of the day was a simple true tribute band. And they play for an hour. <laughs> okay. An hour. An hour. It, was yeah. in, it was an indoor venue. So they, they had two stages, but mm. only one snake to connect all the, 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 the gear to the board, whatever. Sure. All of the local bands played. The tour packages, <laughs> nobody played but Simple Shura. <laughs> so Belfegor didn't play. Uh, Naraxis, hey, dude, dude, nobody that shit is played, but the infuriating tribute oh, played. <laughs> but the locals had a great time. <laughs> yeah. uh, so as direct support, we had a band playing songs from Arise and you know dude direct support you don't play <laughs> direct supports the the slot that gets they, they're the ones that have to take up all the slack for when people fuck up you know because it's not going to be the headline the, the headliner never it's they like a given they, they don't get they fucked over it's always that direct support band it's like a direct support so many times yes <laughs> ends up doing the managerial position kind of thing. Hey, yeah assistant manager is the I've yeah, never heard of a cover it. band going before a band band. <laughs> like, I was just about to... for their real, well, you the real deal. No <laughs> shit, dude. That was my same thought earlier, and I was like, I don't know if I'm 
t- if he said that, and I don't want to act like an asshole and think that it, he didn't say Sepultura hey. twice. I know he heard I heard Sepultura <laughs> and Sepultura cover band, but maybe he was just referring to that the band. same day. Yeah, and that's dude, fucking strange. Se- se- Sepultura, <laughs> they were Sepultura. They were really yeah. weird to tour with because uh, <laughs> our second night of the tour was at the Opera. Uh, Opera House in Toronto, yeah. and it was very like clear on the contract: no spilled water on stage. But still, you guys, I'm, still water, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex, the, the the singer of Naraxis, like he just like, like a, threw waters on his head. Oh, so he's a wrestler. That's the weirdest <laughs> shit I've ever heard. Set, after our yeah. set that night, I'm not kidding you. The tour manager came on stage after the a second after the last note. He came on stage with a mop. He fucking <laughs> gave the mop to our singer. Was like, "You're gonna oh. clean that shit now." Damn. So Alex mopped the stage. <laughs> Alex, <Wow. yeah. laughs> in front of a sold out for us. <laughs> embarrassing oh my god oh he's shit. alex is like a wrestler too he could just be like fuck he's, you uh, he's a wrestler he, he's a former champion <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> damn yeah oh back then i i pay full price ticket to be in the crowd <laughs> i was 19 years old back then damn yeah. and it was the summer right after that i uh, naraxis they put like a uh like an ad, um, I can't remember, was it Facebook or MySpace? I can remember they were looking for bass player. And I just said, uh, oh, I will be interested, but I'm obviously way too young. I was like 18. And Rob was like 31, 32, or whatever. And they called me that, no, you're not too young. You want to try out? Let's go. That's Fresh that. meat. And, yeah, and, perfect. And then, <laughs> Dude, I did the audition, and you know what? Apparently, I, I don't know. Uh, Alex, the singer, told me, but apparently some people message messaged them, and they were like, oh, so Ollie is trying out. I'm done. He got a job. <laughs> oh, Dude, I was 19. other people. Yeah. I was 19 years old. I did nothing back then. I, like... I mean, I, there was a TV show here in Montreal. It was like the equivalent of MTV. And I did one spot for 30 seconds. I did like a, a crazy tapping stuff. But other than that, nobody never heard of me. So like, how come that people turned out the audition for Miraxis because they heard I'm doing it? Hmm. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> But Maybe it was then, just that 30 I mean, second tapping video. Dude. Yeah. Because you're the man. Dude, I can send you the video. It's not that it's not that cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> it might be cool for a 12 years old kid. <laughs> 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 but for us right now, it's like keep working. <laughs> I see. <laughs> keep working on your stuff. It's pretty bad. I still remember when I first saw you guys at the San Francisco show. Uh, you know Francois? The yeah. merch guy, Corpse, Francois. <laughs> Francois, he was. Uh, dude, sure. he used to, dude, he used to date my girlfriend's best friends, so oh, okay. we're together all the time. I think they actually both stayed at my house. Francois, we did, aka the. Yeah, yeah. The, he was uh Who was the bass player before you in Naraxis? Why, why is my brain blanking on that? Yan Tiel. Okay. Have you met Tiel though? Because he never, he, he didn't tour that we much pl- did, so did maybe you didn't tour? met it have you met josh josh, josh staple from boston oh that's who it was that's who it was josh from he uh used, he, he, he used to fill in in your axis yeah he's a fucking cool guy though totally and uh i remember like after watching that set he was like i went up to go buy some neuraxis merch and uh he was like that new bass player. Like he's a fucking kid, dude. That guy is shredding. That guy is like that guy. You can hear every note he plays. Blah blah. And he's all, he's all. Unlike you, Joel, I can't hear anything you play in decrepit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was all, fuck you, friend. I had like my like pretty girlfriend with me at the time. I'm like, dude, fuck you. Like, <laughs> dude, my first show with Nar- with Naraxis, 
check it out. It was Naraxis headline. The the direct support was the last Teloni. I don't know if you heard of that. Band. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the, the Dominic. The, Dominic. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. The, but the third band was Revocation. Oh wow. So in 2008, I played my first real show with Revocation, and I remember the next day in the Ottawa newspaper they said. The new bass player is totally awesome, but he looks like he's six years old. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Fair enough. Dude. Can you imagine? I'm 30, 31 years old in two months, and I mm -hmm. still look like I'm 16. So it's yeah. Eh, you look 24. It's gonna... <laughs> yeah. Uh, Okay. Dude, my dad is 50. I think once you can connect, dude, I think that's and your, your dad's in your in his 50s. My my dad is like 52, 53. And Jesus. Dude, yeah. no joke, man. Like two years ago, we went to a depanner, like to a convenience store to get some beers. And they asked him for his <laughs> ID. And like, <laughs> like, dude, that's my future right there. Yeah, props, you got those baby props to pops, dude. Looking, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, baby Preserved. taste forever. Dude, <laughs> hey, check it out. First time I grow facial hair. I'm doing good, man. First friend, check it out. You take pride yeah. in that shit once you can get it, dude. Hey, dude, same here, man. I fucking, it's, it's I've never really been able to do it. Yeah. I can't do this stuff. I can't do all this stuff up here. It, just it's like pure laziness. It is. That's exactly where it starts. You're like, dude, yeah. I have to do And I wear a mask heck. all the time. But then you're like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> but then you're like, I could rock the beard and then the five o'clock shadow on the neck. You know, I'll just do the neck like once a week. <laughs> yeah. It's a first for me too, dude. I've never been able to. Well, I've always had this problem where it kind of like, like, it's really thick. So it grows back into my face and just scratches me. And then I just end up cutting it. But this time I... I, it didn't that didn't happen i just let it go so now i'm actually like holy shit i dawned on me recently like maybe a few weeks ago i was just like i actually have a beard what the fuck <laughs> and you got some nice i've never been able to grow one of, of course it's yeah, gotta man. be gray i look that makes good, me man. look like i'm 10 years <laughs> older than i am <laughs> well, thanks so who knows maybe, maybe i'll try to Keep it makes going. Makes me feel like we. Good, it's dude. been like a long time yeah. since I saw you guys. I know this is. It. <laughs> now Travis has a, be a beard, man. A gray <laughs> or like a, a full-on Santa Claus always, one. Lockdown he's experiment. Always and just saying, fuck it, just let it go. And now he's. This is what the plague does to you. <laughs> he's all. Yeah. Kenny Rogers is our singer now. What's going? On? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chris Christopherson. <laughs> yeah i got the the what do you call it the the david vincent thing going right here it is. oh yeah you got the oh whoa dude, that's <laughs> dude that's, so that's sticking brown okay. so your mustache is sticking yeah, brown got, like, that's weird yeah my eyebrow down my mustache dude right there. oh is it it's a line and there's like yeah, a dude, like look if you look at my eyebrow like it looks like that part's missing but it's mm -hmm. like gray and it goes in a straight line down my what mustache that's cool Oh, that's cool. fucking cool. Yeah, in the light, that's fucking weird, right? See, Happen biology the... is fucking awesome. Totally. Yeah, dude. It's just all, yeah. We all are individual fucking visual whatevers, dude. All right. <laughs> <We're>, maybe <laughs> we should it, fucking it's start trying to wrap this whatever. up. <laughs> it has been like fucking forever. It has, dude. <laughs> but thanks for fucking sticking around and fucking yeah. chatting with us. Thanks yeah. for having Fuck us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Had a really I, good I could time. tell I could tell how wasted Ollie's getting or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've seen this a million times. The, the, he yeah, is the he's... funnest dude. He is the funnest dude when you're drinking as well. Like, I just oh, yeah. have the Thank funnest... You, that the the time when I was pretty shitty and and uh, you took me to Suplex City. It's Suplex on the, the video City, on that, that video sounds... where I was like I started crowd killing the the the, the band the crowd <laughs> the, the, the cabin when I'm drunk I I because that's the thing when I'm drunk I pretend I'm Brock Lesnar I'm like I'm gonna bring you to Suplex City bitch <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah. a fictional place dude it's not I was, even real I was like I was, what? <laughs> we had just left well, and all of us were fucking ticket. hammed it's a one-way ticket to Suplex City <laughs> no turning back 
Like, I'm bringing you oh, there. Good. That's fucking oh, great, oh, dude. Shit. I fucking <laughs> miss you, dude. I was like, is this like a special fucking place people go to like fucking wrestle? Yeah. If I can... no, He's dude. way into wrestling. Actually, if I suplex you, it means I love you. Ah, oh, dude, I want to get <laughs> suplexed really bad right now, dude. dude I want to feel that love. a lot dude. of people. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. He's gotten around with those suplexes, dude. <laughs> 240 give it a shot (laughs) but oh man this old pandemic changed everything though because uh dude i love drinking and having fun with people but drinking by myself and yeah or or, or, oh you know i don't even know when's the next time i'm gonna see you for real so i'm like uh, it's probably a year well, Probably dude, a year it's, and a half. It's, it's, it's been a year, man. Fuck. Well, this is fucking cool. Uh, that we could do at this the, at right the beginning. Now, man, it's probably going to be uh, another year from now, though. Is what I'm saying. Like next. Yeah. Pff, I mean, I know what we're looking at. We're looking at touring like next February or something. Like starting. Yeah. There's people trying to make it happen in October and stuff like that, and September and whatever. October is. Yeah. And but but you know, do, do you want to come back? I mean, do you really want to? I want to get out there too. Don't get me wrong, Jesus. But yeah, do you really want to go back to like twenty five percent? Yeah, exactly. yeah. Like how it used to be in the old days, or just you know when you're yeah in the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, or actually, some of the sickest shows are actually out there. But you know those those <laughs> those random sea market spots where you're just like, you know, this sucks. Yeah, uh, I don't feel like going back to that. I totally. I don't really feel like doing it. I mean, it makes sense, especially if you know financially that's the thing that comes into play because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day will that even work financially you know because i'm 46 years old i'm not trying to you know and this is your guys gig you know we have to make the ends meet and that Mm -hmm. shit costs fucking money everything totally totally that that's going to be a big factor but i personally this whole time i've had hope Mm -hmm. which is very unlike me but i've I've kind of had uh, a pretty optimistic outlook. I, I know we're going to get back to stuff. I, I There hasn't been a moment where I was like, oh, shit, is this it? You know, because let's face it, we've patterned our lives around this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. No, it, we'll adapt and we'll move on and eventually get yeah, back. Yeah, it, it'll it. get back. I, there hasn't been a moment where I really tripped out. And I, there- I've seen my friends do it. And I've seen other people uh, do it. Um, Nobody in the band. You know, for those people, I tried to be just support, you know, just yeah. like, you know, be the. It, it fucked over a lot of fucking people. I just happened to, you know, I've, I've always, or I've been self employed for 12 years doing, um, selling on eBay and shit like that. So um, I, I was cut out for this. I, I've been able to make that shit uh, get so to the point where I was able to be thrive a little bit. I'm sure third party. You know, my sister actually, uh, she was on CNN. There was a a, a, a story they, or this editorial, like this feature they did about people that their lives just ended with 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 COVID. And then mm-hmm. there's total polar opposites, people that thrived. And that was actually my sister. She's a voice, um, she's a voiceover actor. Oh, no shit. She's on Death oh. Atlas. She's the one that does the, you know, yeah, I know uh, it. I'm sure. one of the great dying tracks. So, yeah. um, but she does like straight up Colgate commercials and just whatever, yeah, uh, all yeah. sorts of crap. Um, and thus lives off of it now. And so that's one of those things where it was like, she was able to thrive because there was still, there was still business, but um, yeah. it's a home-based thing. People that have to go punch a clock or, or whatever, that's where shit got dicey. Um, and if pe- more people are at home, you gotta have you can't just come at them with the same commercials. So she's probably got to do multiple runs of doing all sorts of know. shit. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fucking know? awesome. And she started like two years ago. That's, That's fucking awesome. rad, dude. I I will. She hit me up going, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing this." I was like, "Well, no offense, but you're gonna have to learn engineering." You know, or dude, were either one of your parents? I don't even want to do that shit. I've Were either one of your parents in the voice shit? Were either one of your no, parents? No, 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 no. My dad was a judge. Like no, no. Uh, they were always like, like I'm he just was a seeing lawyer. the correlation between your sister and you both with she, doing we something just have, with a microphone. 
she has a bubbly personality. Let's put it nice. that way. She does the very, uh, she she does a perfect standard white woman, you know, voice. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you would call it. Um, and she nails it. She's really fucking good she at it. She makes you want to brush your teeth. That's what yeah. you're saying. She does all sorts of cool, um, she can do like character stuff too. She's just got a really sparkly kind of personality and, and um, I don't know, just has always had that part in her. I think she probably gets it from my mom. Totally, dude. And I was going to say with the eBay thing, like people, I'm sure tons of people are fucking making a killing on eBay for or, or you will. I mean, a lot of people that people can't get their hands on now. A, a, a lot of people, you know, still did Lyft and Uber and all that kind of shit. I think, you know, just that's the band guy thing to fall back on for a lot of guys. You know? yeah, yeah. As long as you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that whole gig economy thing just. <sighs> Totally. opened up so the like pizza crazy. delivery guys nothing changed for them they're actually, <laughs> oh, they, actually they went they up went, yeah. yeah they went up dude yeah like dude. the uber driver man they made dude, dude it's pretty you're fucking relaxed i don't know in the in california but in quebec here that on uber you can just order food and they drop it yeah i do that like on your front porch not way too much and... where you're there we don't care yeah. Order stuff we bring to you. Mm-hmm. My so, uh, my OnlyFans yeah, account has really been popping up. Too. What's up? I was kidding. What's up, Terry I, I said that uh, Olivier, uh, that my OnlyFans account has been popping. Oh. Just joking. Same for me. Actually, man. I've been selling. I've been doing a Depop. Yeah, that's what I was um, going to ask you in the beginning because I mean, we were trying to plug stuff. Yeah, I should have plugged that. What the yeah, fuck yeah. am I doing, dumbass? Um, okay. We never prepare for these much either, dude. Um, I, I ordered a shirt off Travis because he did. He went live or something. Was like, oh, yeah. I got the. Oh shirt. really? I got cat hair on it, and I'm like, ah, oh, my cat. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, like, bought one immediately. The um, Tracelet Ryan, light out of nowhere. The uh, <laughs> well, hey, did the whole live thing? That's because that is the algorithms of these um social media platforms. Mm-hmm. They love live uh, when you go live, so that's a great way to to get people looking at your shit. Because um, everything else is so truncated, you know, they they limit so much shit. But there's certain things that you can do. Going live is one of them. That algorithm seems to really love that. So yeah, let's all the people. I try to do that. When, but anyways, I, I started a Depop account, so I've been selling like old shirts and just shit that I've accumulated over the years. It started from me having the moving into the new place and having to get rid of some shit because it was just getting to be too much. Um, and I got a lot of stuff. So I'm going to, it's called, you can find me at depopitation. Yes, <laughs> of course. Um, <laughs> so I've been doing that and have, and honestly, I have fun doing it because it's just, it's fun. Like I'm able to, I don't know, get rid of stuff at the same time as, you know, I don't know. It's just been fun. I needed to step it up because I've just been, uh, it's fucking... mostly like old metal shirts or just shirts yeah or respect. whatever to be honest yeah it, everything like to be honest it's all sorts of shit hell yeah um but old you know there's stuff i have like tons of or quantity of you know mm-hmm. certain cds yeah. or just all sorts of dumb shit stuff i've collected and stuff that's just accumulated i'm a collector of cds lps you know Same um, too, dude i like physical shit yeah, I'm a bit, definitely a physical collector, and I've finally upgraded my my stereo. Um, to I mean, it's still a piece of shit, but uh, I I do a lot of thrift store shopping or uh, thrifting. You know, it's yeah to find stuff that's to to flip, you know, or whatever. Um, and so I've been keeping my eyes open for decent components, you know, stereo components and shit. So I put together pretty decent. Finally, a, a decent uh, turntable set up. And because uh, I was on the edge of just going, you know what? Maybe I should just sell my fucking records, man, because uh, this is, this shit sounds like shit. And I we got I've a never... little peek. We got a little peek into that collection earlier when you took us into the caverns real quick. I saw a bunch of LPs. Oh, that's my, uh, the stuff I have, the inventory I have online. Oh, uh, okay. So Years ago, when, when, when like, warehouse real quick. Well, well, when, when, uh, Tower Records went under. <laughs> they you know they had these sales it was just like come get it like we're going under it's our out going out of business sale that's where i started everything mm-hmm. um 
because they, it was like, I, I was there, you know, looking shit up on my phone. And then they were like, all right, fuck it. Everything's 50 cents each. And I was just like, <laughs> they yeah. just started grabbing shit. Just uh, me and my friends were like, fuck it. So that's one of the things that helped. Um, Kick that off. Help me get to where I could quit my, my day job at the record store. And that's stuff sick, like that. Dude. I worked at record stores for years. Um, so uh, then I just basically learned what they were doing and attributed it to my home uh, and started doing it here. And um, it's fun. It's it's like fishing without killing anything. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. When you Looking find for stuff the, and finding and it. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. This goes, that I used to have a scanner. It was crazy. That's I was awesome. one of those dickheads that had yeah, a scanner. Chris from Cryptopsy <laughs> was also working city, uh, yeah. like a, a record store and stuff. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people, they don't know what's the feeling. Uh, just you go there and you're looking, looking for something. Yeah. yeah. Having to look yeah. at thanks lists, like death metal is great for that. Oh, yeah. Every, oh. every band had a thanks. Totally. Just massive, a whole panel dedicated to fucking thanks. And that's where you went and looked and oh that name sounds cool you look it up oh there's uh the, the cover looks sick or the cover looks stupid and that's how exactly. you kind of that's how i gauged shit unfortunately because i grew up in escondido i didn't tape trade i didn't know about any of that world i i uh i'm lucky that my mom took diego sanchez and i to fucking <laughs> death metal shows in san diego like oh, yeah. fucking, you know i didn't have a car until i was like 19 it was, yeah uh, hey. I'm I didn't, sorry didn't to have it easy. Sorry to cut you off, Travis. I could listen to you talk all night, but <laughs> we're, we're coming up on the three hour mark. It's getting kind of ridiculous. <laughs> that's no, our kind of informal. Dude, it's all good stuff, dude. Yeah. It's all good stuff. Good. Good. Um, okay. We got, we got to have you back because I feel like we're only scratching the surface. Of dude, your... I'd love to cut. You know what would be cool? I would love to come back with like Diego. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, yeah. That would oh, be great, dude. Totally. That guy, really take I, us down I, memory I love that lane, guy. dude. Yeah, I love that dude. And when we start talking, he has a knack for remembering certain things, and I have a knack for remembering certain things. So it's like you start totally. getting a bigger, a bigger and better picture. I wish he was here because he would have been all, "No, dude, it was this," you know. But <laughs> yeah. Again, I'm probably wrong in it's all some good. of that stuff. I mean, but he's the shit. Talking about Travis all the time. What was that? I mean, uh, remember that Travis? At some point, we were on tour, Cryptops in this gorge. Oh yeah, yeah. Europe. And we called you in the middle of the night because oh, we were drunk. I hate that shit, and dude. Diego was like, Yeah, of course I know Travis. Of course he's my friend. Yeah. <laughs> and we we fucking woke you up in the middle oh, of it. the night or something. I can't believe I answered. It's probably because it was Diego. <laughs> what, what who died? You know, what the fuck? What the... Yeah, because it was Diego. Shit. Yeah. We would love to do a strangulation themed episode of Pally Death Podcast. Oh, fuck and, yeah. and, just... But thank you so much. Oh, no. Hey, always... Thank you, man. But, yeah, yeah, dude. Well, we're, 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 we're stoked to have you. Fucking Holly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. Where did wow. you come from, dude? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll hang out for a little bit, but we're going to stop yeah, the recording. Yeah, we got to sign now. off on the episode. But yeah. So uh, thank you so much, guys. Fucking, this was super cool, dude. Callydeath.com. Hit that place, hub for all your shit, social media, Facebook, uh, fucking yeah, exactly. Instagram, <laughs> YouTube. Subscribers keep creeping up, dude. Let's fucking see those numbers rise even more. Tell your friends, fucking everybody. Smash that button. It's yeah. fucking all those fucking gang signs. <laughs> giving you the fucking, background track. <laughs> all that shit. Love you guys. Cali see you guys next week. We got that shit. All right. Peace out. Peace.